release the balloons. There in the air, the football will follow. Welcome everyone to Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. The second ranked Tigers of Clemson with an opportunity to clinch the Atlantic Division of the ACC. Playing host of the Pitt Panthers who are trying to get bowl eligible. They have to play in a bowl game each of the last eight years. Steve Levy alongside Brian Greasy, Todd McShay is on the sideline for us this afternoon. A spectacular college football Saturday with temperatures in the low 60s. And if, if that gives us the idea, Deshaun Watson's shoulders just fine. Well, you're not going to come out on a senior day and not give it a go. He didn't practice Monday through Wednesday, did a little bit on Thursday after practice, and looks like he's good to go in this game. But we got to keep an eye on him because that shoulder was bruised a week ago. We were told they would limit the designed runs for the quarterback, but not the passing offense. In fact, they might even take deeper shots today than usual, but that's because of the Pittsburgh defense. Yeah, Pittsburgh's defense has been atrocious, one of the worst in all of college football against the forward pass. I expect Deshaun Watson to take his shots early and often down the field. This might be the only advantage that Pittsburgh has today when they receive the opening kickoff. Clemson won the toss and deferred. Quadri Henderson is back for Pittsburgh, and he is the most dangerous kick returner in the country. Four touchdowns on the kick return in his last 10 games. Dabo Sweeney told us today a touchback is a good play. And here we go, underway. And that kick, Dabo gets exactly what he wants the touchback. Pittsburgh will get the football first. We'll see that outstanding Clemson defense. Yeah, they had six starters from this city defense a year ago drafted. Lost some pass rush and Don on the outside. Shaq lost it, but they have come back with Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence on that defensive line, a true freshman who has been outstanding. This defense, one of the top ten in college football, and we know. Where this team wants to go for Clemson in the national championship game, this defense is more responsible for getting them there than anything. Nathan Peterman is the starting quarterback for Pitt. They send George Aston, their fine fullback, in motion. And they move a lot around with Henderson. Here's Peterman to pass on first down. And he'll throw over the head of Aaron Matthews. Big challenge, obviously, for Nathan Peterman coming into Death Valley. He's an experienced guy, graduate, transfer, great fit in this system of Matt Canada, but he needs to mix speeds today. A little no huddle, some huddle, a little bit of a sugar huddle to try to keep Clemson's defense off balance, and then they need to control this ball. Steve, I think they cannot allow their defense to be on the field too much in this game, and a lot of that comes down to Peterman's decisions. Quadri Allison, bottom of your screen. Here's Peterman throwing again and has a wide open target. Able to hook up with Jamar Parrish. The fullback out of the backfield for the big gain. It's good for 44. I don't think Cordero Tankersley thought that the fullback could catch as he jumps the out route. And the big man at 260 with a great fingertip catch. And Brian Peterman actually had James Conner open in the flat. I thought that's where he was going with the ball. But he had the presence of mind to keep his eyes on the corner, made the right read, a great throw dropping it in. For Paris, just his fourth reception of the season. And it's good for 44. And the Panthers on the move here early. Peterman, little shovel to Aston. And he's close to picking up first down yardage. Looked like Bullware was trying to strip that football free. And you're going to see the mix of speeds right off the bat pit. No huddle, back to the line of scrimmage. Second and short. We'll call it two. And we're going to see a lot of that, Steve. A lot of shifts and motions from these tight ends, fullbacks. Now you're going to see them all shift again. It's almost like wholesale change, just trying to get Clemson off balance. And in the end, it's a simple handoff to James Conner. He has the first down yard. What you don't see often is the offensive tackles yep. moving around like that. Both these tackles, Biznoti and, and O'Neal, they're going to be moving quite a bit in this game. You don't see that very often. But really, all it is, it's an illusion of complexity, but it's just very simple, trying to get James Conner a downhill run attack against a defense that doesn't quite know where to fit in the gap. Yeah, and in the end, it's an off-tackle run yep. for a few yards, which we see all the time. That's Connor split out now. 
in the slot to the left. Ashton in motion. And Peterman out of the gun. Fakes the inside handoff. It's a pitch to Ashton. The fullback's in for the score. George Ashton. Number 35, George Ashton. Touchdown. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And Pittsburgh is on the board first. Well, this is, we've seen this week in and week out. The first drive a defense has to come out and defend against an offense, you're going to see all kinds of different things. And Matt Canada and this Pitt offense came in with a great plan on this first drive and confused Clemson defensively. Here's Chris Blewett on for the extra point. Puts it through. The extra point by Chris Blewett is good. Looky here, 7-0, Clemson trailing early. Well, and you're not going to get much better bait than, than James Conner, but he's the one that became the bait on the fly sweep. He's going to come in motion here. What you're going to see at the end of the day, they're trying to get this football inside to Aston. It's great job of design. These linebackers have to respect Connor, and then you, you get him. It's basically a power play, but using Aston instead of the quarterback. And they've seen it on tape. We saw the first play last week against Miami, and the 21st offensive play for Pittsburgh, they use it again for a touchdown. So it's one thing to study the tape. It's another with the speed and all the different motions and movements pre-snap to be out there on the field. I, Clemson will adjust, but I think it just shocks you early on when you're on the field and have to deal with so many different things that they show you offensively and then once the ball snap all the different uh, all the different angles blocking angles and different potential ball carriers that Pitt throws at you and there you see the Clemson defense this is all new to them they had not allowed a touchdown in the first quarter all season long statistically speaking that's a touchdown pass it's a receiving touchdown by Aston his third of the season not a rushing touchdown Artavis Scott try to return the kick for Clemson out to the 22 yard line. Scott, brought down by number 15, Reggie Mitchell. Tigers well, in case you were wondering if Pitt was going to come in and put up a fight, I got, got your answer. Now it's Deshaun Watson's turn. There were question marks as we talked about this uh, this week, but he's got to push the ball down the field. Minimum of 15 attempts, Steve. He's got to get it outside to Williams and Deion Kane. Then he can then he can take advantage of the underneath space to Renfro and Leggett, in my opinion. But and, and those design runs, as you said, please, out of the game plan altogether. So when they say limit, you mean zero. <laughs> Able to complete the Hunter Renfro. How many catches did you predict for him today? I said 10, the over-under on 10 for Renfro. Yeah, that's number one. Outstanding player, very difficult in space to cover. And the way that Pitt plays, deep, man-to-man, -man, there should be space underneath for Renfro. On second and short. Watson throw to Artavis Scott, and he's out just across the 40, has first down yardage, and Clemson will move the chain. You know, Pitt has been very good against the rush, and talking with Jeff Scott, the offensive coordinator for Clemson last night, he said, part of our run game will be our perimeter pass, and that last throw an example. Off the play fake, Watson steps up and throws down the middle of the field. Had his man wide open, Deion Kane, and couldn't connect. There's shot number one down the field. It's Deion Kane, who really has come on hot for Clemson. You see the safety. That's Terrace Webb, just not able to match the speed of Deion Kane. They missed that one, but they know it's going to be there most of the day. Second down and 10. Hand off to Gallman. Wayne Gallman. He slammed out of the 45 by Jordan Whitehead, who was second on the team in Pittsburgh tackles. Pit player down on the field. It looks like it might be. It's Teleni. Teleni, yeah. Jeremiah Teleni. Boy, they cannot afford to lose him. Tyreek Jarrett. Trailing by a score of seven to nothing. Pittsburgh got the football first, marched right down the field, and Nathan Peterman hit George Aston. Little shovel pass for a touchdown. A 75 yard scoring drive, and that's why it's seven nothing in favor of Pittsburgh. This is Clemson's first possession. And on third and five, Deshaun Watson is throwing and completing for the first down. Able to hit Jordan Leggett at his tight end. And uh, Deshaun Watson coming into this game. Question marks about his shoulder. I think he's 
answered those here in the first quarter. Three out of four. The one throw he did miss was a miss down the field. Potential touchdown to Deion Kane. Watson lofting one down the right sideline, and it's caught. It's big Mike Williams. He hangs out of that one. Down to the 17. We talked about this. You're going to see 15 to 17 of these types of throws, Steve. Mike Williams outside one-on-one -on -one with Avante Maddox. Maddox only 5'9", 175 pounds, and we know big Mike Williams goes 6'3", 225. That's good for 31 on that completion. Now Watson able to get it free to Artavis Scott, and he slams the turf in anger. It's a big drive here for Clemson. You know, Pitt came out with a great drive, went right down the field, puts the ball in the end zone. Sean Watson's got to take advantage of this opportunity in the red zone. Clemson got a little wake-up call on senior day. They were feeling maybe a little too good about themselves on that first drive. Here's Watson throwing, end zone, intercepted. It's Ryan Lewis, picks off Watson in the end zone. That's how that drive will come to an end. Well, you start to feel yourself a little bit, you get something rolling in the passing game, and then you get in the fringe and try to take a shot. Just didn't pay attention to the outside corner. Let's take a look, let it roll, guys, and look at the decision point of Deshaun Watson. When the ball leaves his hands, there is there's a defender on the outside. He's just laying back. Ryan Lewis, great job of not playing the inside slant and staying outside in his zone for a big interception. Ryan Lewis, his second interception of the season for Deshaun Watson. That's the 11th interception he has thrown. Pittsburgh with the lead and the football at the 20. Handoff, James Conner. And he is pushed back by that swarming Clemson defense. I think it's important here for Pitt, Pat Narduzzi, Matt Canada, not to take the foot off the gas pedal with the creativity on offense. Don't just turn around and try to hand it to James Conner, because your offensive line is going to struggle to block these four big guys up front for Clemson. Whole lot of motion. Get used to that all afternoon. They fake it. They fake it twice, and then Peterman on the run in some trouble. And tried to get the ball in the hands of Quadri Henderson and went over his head. In fairness, Henderson goes 5'8". That pass would have been too high for a six-foot receiver. Yeah, just getting them, getting rid of that football. It's a great job by Clemson's secondary. Get hard play action. It's very easy to bite up on that, but they had great cover. Nowhere to go with that football. Henderson is the guy they want to get the ball into his hands in space. He's their big offensive playmaker, and they need to do more than just return kicks. Third and ten. Pittsburgh wants to stay away from this today. On that first scoring drive, they moved so fast they had no third down opportunities. Here's Peterman running around back there. He'll take off, has the first down, and then scampers out of bounds. And there's a flag. Flag back behind the play. Our referee today is Dwayne, it's pronounced hate, as in he hate me. Holding, holding. offense, okay. number 63, 10-yard penalty, go down. Wipes out that first down. Yes, yeah, Alex Officer, the center on this pit offense. He is right here. Watch as Peterman starts to scramble. Officer's going to get out and get a good block for him on the linebacker bullwear right there. But you just got to disengage, and that's a good call by the official. Head coach Pat Narduzzi in his second year running what he calls the Little Panthers. <laughs> They're big underdogs here today. Third and 16 after the penalty marker. Hand it off to Dantes Ford of the jet sweep and nothing doing there. Kendall Joseph, one of the playmakers in the middle of that Tiger Kendall defense, Joseph. gonna bring up a fourth down and a punt. Yeah, safe. But, but file that, that penalty. File that back in the back of your mind, you know. You got a first down there, up seven on the road, and a chance to really seize momentum. And now you get backed up and got to punt the football away. Ryan Winslow is set to punt. Ray Ray McLeod, they weren't sure if he'd be able to go with an ankle injury. And McLeod won't call for the fair catch and some heavy traffic. Try to get a return. 
And it looks like he stopped just shy of the 50-yard line. Number 47, Ronnie. The Pitt Panthers have the lead. Jamar Parrish on the receiving end of an Ethan Peterman pass. That was good for 44. Then Big George Aston, the touchdown. Our only points of the day so far won't be the last. Valley, pleasant good afternoon to all of you. Steve Levy alongside Brian Greasy, along with Todd McShay as well. So we rolled into town on Thursday on our way to Clemson practice. Got the call, practice closed. Antenna up. What's wrong with Deshaun Watson? What do you see so far? They may have just closed practice because they knew you were coming, oh. but you know, maybe they didn't want you to see that Deshaun wasn't 100% uh, practice, but certainly it looks like at the start of this game, he's okay, but through that interception, that's 11 interceptions, Steve, on the year for number four. That's not, that's too many. Against 24 touchdowns. Pittsburgh a 7-0 lead. Ryan Lewis makes the stop. He's the player that intercepted Watson in the last series, Todd. And this is a great opportunity for Watson today against this defense for Pitt, which plays a lot of quarters coverage, but essentially it just becomes man-to-man -man coverage. Competent quarterbacks have really eaten them alive. The Panthers throwing the ball down the field. Watson has been inconsistent this season throwing the ball down the field. He's got a great chance today to, to fix that. Watson on the run and throwing on the run. And they're going to say incomplete. Ball hit the turf. Try to hook up with Artavis Scott with three white jerseys around him. Yep. And try that ball definitely hit the ground there. First time that uh, Deshaun Watson's gotten hit in this game. Linebacker Matt Galambos got back there and put a hit on him, popped right up. Third down and eight, just across midfield. I heard pizza, pizza. <laughs> Which is better than what we heard a week ago in the ESPN audio. Long throw! What a catch! Mike Williams! You want to call that a 50-50 ball? That's up to you. That looked like a 90-10 ball for Mike Williams on Ryan Lewis. And the biggest challenge for Pitt in this game will be this play right here. It's the 50-50 ball, as you said. And you, you, who's going to cover that? Mike Williams? There's not NFL corners that can cover that. He's got a little A.J. Green in him, the ability to adjust his body in the air. Hand off to Gallman. Pick up on one on the play. And again, this, this has been the, the biggest hurdle and struggle for Pitt all year. And Ryan Lewis is in good position there. He's in phase with the wide receiver. The problem is he doesn't look back for the football, so he's at a disadvantage. Mike Williams just goes right up over top of him. But that throw, that play to Williams, should work every single time. It should, in theory, unless your corners are in position, turn their head around and play the football. Second red zone trip so far for Clemson. Last one entered on an interception. Here's Artavis Scott, shy of the pylon. Big play by Terrace Webb to bang him out before he got in. Looked like Lewis on that, that time went for the inside route to Renfro and completely left Artavis Scott on the outside. You can't guess. And Ryan Lewis right now, you know you're at a disadvantage, but you can't guess. you got to play your assignment. 18-yard play there after the 30-yarder to Williams. Sets up first and goal, the handoff. Wayne Goldman, honored prior to the game on senior day. He goes in for the touchdown. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Biggest fear of Pat Narduzzi coming in this situation, you know, that you you know you're out man. Try to see some momentum early. Take a big drive on offense. And you have a penalty by Alex Officer, and you leave your defense out there too much. This offense will not be denied. We really love their Clemson, right? <laughs> I mean, more so than other places we go. They are in love with the home team here. Quadri Henderson, two yards deep, will take a knee. Yeah, Pitt had a great opening drive, went right down the field, 75 yards. And it was a shovel pass twice in that drive. First time to the tight end, Orndorff, and then on the touchdown, 
They shift George Aston, and then they bring James Conner on a jet sweep action, which holds two Clemson defenders on the outside, and then the flip inside to Aston wide open with great blocking. Very creative design from offensive coordinator Matt Canada, and needs to continue to go to the well on a consistent basis to move the ball against this defense. Window dressing. Love it. That's Maurice French. Got knocked down once. Knocked down a second time. You see the back of his jersey, <laughs> Maurice French. It looks like a typo. <laughs> it's not. And if it was, we'd be making the same mistake all game. Maurice French, F F R E N C H. I love it when we come, you know, to the stadium three hours before, and you yeah. talk to the SIDs about pronunciation, right. and you go, "Is it to Maurice F F French?" <laughs> the like, first no, F right. is silent. <laughs> Second and ten. Poor kid's been hearing that his whole life, right? On a shovel. Fake to Connor. Shovel to Scott Orndorff, the tight end. And off to number 83, Scott Orndorff. Second reception of the game for him. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Another one. You got to respect James Connor. You can't blame the linebacker there. Why not? Move the sticks. First down and ten. Whole lot of motion. Peterman off the play fake. Looks like he wants to keep it. And now a little jump pass there. Hooks up with Aston again for the big game. And another first down. You know, we, we talk scheme all the time with Pitt, and James Connor's obviously a great back, but Nathan Peterman doesn't get his due. He's got mobility, very accurate. I think most importantly, he's a great decision maker, as you saw there. Gain of 14 on the play. Here's Connor out of the backfield. Nothing doing there. That'll be a loss. I agree with you, Todd. You know, Peterman certainly doesn't get a whole lot of attention because of that man, James Connor, but he is the bell cow in this offense. But they realize you can't just turn around and hand it to him. They don't have the horses up front, especially against this defense, to do that. They've got to protect him with first down passing, getting the ball in the perimeter in the passing game with Quadri Henderson, and then, only then, will you soften it up for Connor on the inside. And if you're second to Tony Dorsett in anything, you're doing okay. After the loss, second and 12. Peterman with some pressure, able to dump it off and complete to James Connor. Wow, did they make that look easy? And Pittsburgh retakes the lead. He doesn't just run the football, Steve. He can catch as well. Clemson got caught in the worst possible defense. They tried to blitz, trying to, Brett Venables trying to dial something up. He brought Bolware off the edge, and Bolware was the one responsible for James Conner. It was the right call at the right time for Pitt. Chris blew it on for the extra point. And Pittsburgh once again goes up by seven. James Cotter, Captain Connor, one of the captains on this Pittsburgh team. How about Pittsburgh? Two, not one, two 75 yard touchdown drives. Nothing little, to lose, right? Little Panthers on top. First being diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma, received messages of support from athletes all over the country, including then Clemson pitcher Clay Schmidt, who went through the same battle in the summer of 2015. He returned to the mound last season. They started as Instagram friends and full-on friends. They had never met, had never met prior to their pregame meeting today. And uh, there's a friendship coming full circle. Oh, man, well, it never met. And talking with James Conner yesterday, he said, I was just looking forward to giving him a big hug, man. Trying to pick some holes, that's a fine return. He's out to the 30-yard line. Connor on the receiving end of the longest pass play against the Tigers this year. Yeah, you're gonna see, here's Ben Bulware right here, and here's Kendall Joseph. One of those two guys is responsible for the back out of the backfield. Bulware's coming on a blitz. You see Joseph's kind of caught up on the inside, and nobody is left for James Connor. Give Nathan Peterman credit. He recognized the blitz, took advantage of it, He's now 7 for 9, 142 yards and two touchdowns. There's an injured Pittsburgh player down. Amir Watts went down earlier. 
And this is Shantez Moss, another freshman on that Panthers defense. A freshman tailback. See James Conner, the first one over there to check on his teammate to running back position. Moss is one of five true freshmen to play for the Panthers this season. And you see Connor, yeah. I mean, like it or not, he has become a different kind of leader for this team. He's not just one of the best players, if not the best player on the team. He has become so much more than that, almost like a, a father figure to the rest of his teammates because they look at him with such admiration and respect. And it means a lot to uh, Shantez Moss that he comes over and supports him. He's holding that right arm, left arm, looks like. We told you about the Hodgkin lymphoma for Connor. He also had a battle back from an MCL injury, right. which is like having a cupcake in comparison. But that's the point. When you see an injured player on the field, he was able to come back from that. So Connor has really has been through everything. He told us it's given him tremendous perspective in life. He talked about most people dreading Mondays, yeah. going back to work. Yep. Monday was his chemo day, you know? Yep. He, he gets it. He understands. And, he and loves he, Mondays now, right? Yeah. Clean bill of health now. Gets checked out every six months or so. What a great story. C.J. Fuller is the ball carrier. Shane Roy, they were in three deep now on their defensive tackles because of injuries. Well, for as poor as Pitt's pass defense has been, they're 13th in the nation in run defense, and that's the design by Pat Narduzzi, the head coach, who brought the system with him from Michigan State. They're going to gamble with man-to-man -man coverage in that quarter's look, a lot in pass coverage, but they're going to be sound and have nine guys in the box versus the run. Rob Peter to pay Paul. That's how they describe it to us. And that allows for passing plays. Deion Kane has first down yardage. I, I think it's playing to your strengths and knowing your weaknesses. You know, I think Pat Narduzzi does not want to allow Clemson to run the ball down their throat. That's what he told us yesterday. He wants to make Deshaun Watson complete those 50-50 balls deep down the field. And here is a designed run, I believe, for Deshaun uh, Watson. I do not like it. <laughs> I don't like it. We were told design <laughs> runs would be limited. And you saw that you saw how he ran, ran right there. He right. went into the middle of the line and tried to find a place to fall down, which I would do the same thing. If you're not going to take it off your call sheet, I'll take it off as a quarterback by just falling down. And they're trailing by seven, oh, by the way. They're in a ball game here. Here's Watson to throw. Plenty of time. Great protection. And it's out of bounds. Was looking for Ray Ray McLeod. Well, he was out of bounds. Brings up a third down and eight. Part of it is if you want to have a quarterback run game, I'm fine with that. But bring in Kelly Bryant, who has rushed 10 times in this in this season. You know, the big 6'3", 215-pound sophomore. But don't run number four. Saw a whole lot of Nick Schusler last week. In fact, he was the Clemson player of the week. Came in in relief. And Watson was banged up on that shoulder. Here's third and eight. Watson steps out of some trouble, able to complete. Good job by Mike Williams to hang on. And there is a flag back behind the play. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. Five is Juan Price, their big sack machine on the defensive end. Take a look at this movement in the pocket. Linebacker comes in, just a little side step there. Allows for enough time for Deshaun Watson to get rid of this football. And then, you know, Mike Williams isn't a burner, but his size allows him to make a lot of those catches in traffic. And then you just see the strength 6'3, 225 to hold on the ball when he takes a shot. Tack, tack on the 15. Ticky tack call there on Price. You've been hit a lot harder than that, Greasy, <laughs> with no flag. Handoff, CJ Fuller trying the right side. He'll stumble forward to about the 13 yard line where Reggie Mitchell upended him. Make sense of all that, Levy? I see the Esso Club <laughs> upside down, of course. We might or might not have stopped by there and picked up a free hat. Just saying. On second and four. Artavis Scott running through people and right into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson.
penalty flag in the backfield. Yep. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense. Number 69. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Take it off the board. Maverick Morris, the redshirt junior from Broxton, Georgia, got flagged there. Nicky got his uh, left paw up in the face mask. Good call. I have three godsons, Grease. Three godsons. One of them's named Maverick. That's not that common a name. Maverick top, Torres. Top <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. <laughs> On second and 19 after the flag. That's Mike Williams again. Now oh, Pitt, Pitt has to take advantage of, of that penalty. Now you gave up a touchdown like a hot knife through butter there. Now you get an opportunity after that penalty to bring up a third and 12. Got to find some way to get a stop here and force a field goal attempt. I think you take some pressure off these corners, maybe play a two deep defense. No one expect the pass, Pat Narduzzi. Third and 12. Watson in some trouble, throws it as he was hit, able to complete. It's Williams takes a couple of big hits. He's able to hang on and has the first down. That's just bad technique by Avante Maddox. He's at the top there. He's got help over the top. There's no reason to go down the field there. He allows Mike Williams, who went out of bounds, but was pushed out of bounds. As long as he comes back in and establishes himself, makes a big first down catch. 16 yards there, Clemson 4 of 4 on third down. Watson was throwing, the crowd didn't hear the whistle. Pittsburgh had called timeout. Prior to the ball being snapped, timeout. Pittsburgh, their first charge timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Now that's a great Williams already over 100 yards receiving today. We've still got two minutes left in the first quarter. On first down a goal, Watson throws incomplete. Look for Hunter Renfro. The crowd was looking for a penalty flag. Jordan Whitehead had the clean cover. Yeah, if that ball were thrown a little bit more in the area of Hunter Renfro, it might have got a call, but that was a clear throw away from Deshaun Watson. First down play action. Sometimes you take a shot, and if it's not there and the defense has leverage, quarterback coach will tell you to throw it in the stands, and that's what he did. Watson was picked off. On their first possession, trip inside the red zone. Here's Goldman. Lowers the shoulder and the helmet. Jordan Whitehead did the same to bring him down shy of the goal line. Third and goal upcoming. Could be an interesting decision here for Jeff Scott, the offensive coordinator. You know, Mike Williams is going off right now. Nobody on the pit roster can guard number seven in orange, but you're on the one yard line. You want to be able to run with Wayne Goldman. That's Williams, top of your screen. And it is Goldman, and he stopped short. I'm not sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. Bam Bradley slammed him to the turf, fourth and goal. And the crowd urging Clemson on. They're gonna bring in the defensive lineman, Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence, 42 and 90, the big boys. I love when these guys come in. Watch these guys block. Looks to me like there might be an unbalanced set. I'm not an expert, but it might be an unbalanced uh, offensive formation here. <laughs> Wilkins is no stranger to the end zone. We'll watch for that. Not this time. Hand it to Goldman. Did he get there? Football came out. Picked up by Pittsburgh. It's Jordan Whitehead running it back. Jordan Whitehead diagonally the length of the field for the touchdown. Quinton Wurgen knocked it out. Goldman was fighting for the turf at the goal line. What a play in a stunning turn of events. Quinton Wurgenis able to bang it free. It will go as a 100-yard fumble return for a score. If it counts, it stands. Right. The ruling on the field is a fumble. And the crowd goes wild because they just watched the replay on a jumbotron. The question is, did Gallman, did the football cross the plane?
before it came out. This was the absolute right call on the field because they teach these officials to rule, let the, the play roll out before you make a call, and then we can always go back and rule it on the other side. And it looked to me like Gallman got that football over the plane of the goal line before it came out. And again, the crowd reacts to the replay on the jumbo screen here at Memorial Stadium. We're going to see a bunch of different looks. Trying to give our replay official in the booth an opportunity to see all these different angles. There's a couple of them there that uh, show at least definitively for me anyway that that football crossed the plane before it came out. We will empty the tank on replays on this kind of play. What a critical play in the football game. And again we're not looking at whether the ground caused that fumble because if it as soon as it crosses the plane. It's a touchdown. Would have to be conclusive to overturn it. Again, the ruling on the field, the original ruling, which is so critical, is fumble and Pittsburgh 100 yard return for a touchdown. And we are right next to the instant replay booth here at Memorial Stadium. Wow. If for some reason they don't overturn this. Yeah. What a change in momentum. And, and this, I think this shows the, the, the trust that the, the officials on the field are having in instant replay that even if that side judge saw a little bit of, of indecision if that ball goes over or not to let that fumble play out trusting that instant replay is going to make them right on the back end. Because the opposite, if they if they rule it dead and it is a fumble, and Pitt doesn't have the opportunity to pick it up and run the other way, you're you're negating that opportunity for Pitt, which would have been a big one. They're pointing out the obvious here, right? Based on an inch or two, we're looking at a 14-14 yeah. game or a 21 to seven yep. number two Clemson trailing at home to unranked Pittsburgh. I think they realize how big this call is taking their time with it. And Joe Ryder's our replay official. See right there you see the football there. Again there's no knees down anywhere not looking at that it's really where the football is I think that one before it That's... and they were running behind Christian Wilkins the big fella here we go after review the Clemson ball carrier had possession of the ball when he crossed the goal line So that's a hundred yards of nothing for Jordan Whitehead and Pittsburgh. You were right on that one all along. Well, well I, I, I love when the system works, right? The, the officials on the field, they call it a certain way for a reason. Um, he may have, you know, elevated the expectations of Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt faithful, but they're trusting that replay is going to make them right. In this case, I think they did. Here's Greg Hugel on for the extra point. And just like that, we're tied at 14 all. Cassidy Hubbard, our first update of the afternoon. Great. Cassidy Hubbard along for the ride all afternoon. She'll keep you posted on everything happening in this great country of ours on this Veterans Day weekend across college football. Interesting developments here. Yep, absolutely. Well, 
can't take away how how well Pitt has played early in this game outside of what we knew was their weakness defending the pass down the field. Uh, offensively, they have been outstanding, well prepared, executing well. Nate Peterman, seven to nine, almost 150 yards and two touchdowns in one quarter. Still 40 seconds to play in this eventful first quarter. In the box score tomorrow, it's going to read as a Wayne Gallman one yard touchdown run. But it was so much more. If you're watching the broadcast, and we're glad you are. Quadri Henderson will take a knee in the end zone. What a quarter already for Mike Williams, Todd. Yeah, Mike Williams came in with 754 receiving yards. He may go up yards by the time this game's over. His ability to catch the ball that's up in the air, to torque his to torque his body and find it and go up with the strong hands and catch it, making it very difficult on these pit corners, Brian. Well, and he's got such a big catch radius. He's flexible. You know, he wasn't a big weight room guy, so he didn't, he wasn't too inflexible. He was in a neck brace six months ago, Steve. I mean, think about that. And now he is absolutely terrorizing corners in college football. Here's James Conner, the ball carrier. Picks up a yard or two, terrorizing corners in college. When's he going to be terrorizing NFL cornerbacks, Todd? Very soon. I, he very likely will be the first wide receiver taken in the, the upcoming NFL draft. Hand off to Connor again, making people miss. And he's just shy of midfield. 15 seconds left on the clock here in the first quarter. That's a great run for James Connor. You know, we don't typically see him on the edge. That's normally Quadri Henderson territory. But you get him out there, 235 pounds. He puts a shallow cut on a linebacker and gains 15. That's stealing. Connor had the 44 yard touchdown catch that put Pitt up at that time. But Clemson has answered back. We saw 362 yards passing offense in the first quarter. 14 all. ESPN app and watch ESPN. See, Brent Venables needs to dial up some defenses here. Pitts averaging 11 yards a play in that first quarter. First play as we open up quarter number two. Quadri Henderson. On the, what I like to call the zoom action, and then he then he carries the football on the jet sweep as well. A lot of football terminology here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get that from? The zoom I just learned this week. <laughs> jet sweep I've known. Jet sweep You're coming a long years. way, man. Yeah. Six or seven more years, I'll have this all figured out. <laughs> Here's Connor. Lowers the shoulder and stays on his feet. Still a loss. Cordray Tankersley. Where have we seen this kind of run before? Number seven in Baton Rouge. Boom. Look out. That off arm of James Conner, he and Fortinet are two of the best in college football with their off hand. The ball is not carrying the football, using it as a weapon. Tankersley got the worst of that exchange. Brings up a third down and eight for Pittsburgh. And they'll get loud in Clemson. the hands of Scott Orndorff couldn't bring it down and the Clemson defense holds two things I want you to watch here Steve watch this block here by Connor and then the throw from Nathan Peterman he doesn't just run it he protects and then this is a perfect throw from Nathan Peterman. he can't walk it out there any better Orndorff has got to make a play yeah he does but he made that catch a week ago it's not from a lack of toughness because he took a shot last week and held on he, I think he just Found the ball late in the air. Wow, low snap. Ryan Winslow took that off the turf. Good job to get it away out of the long snap of Pat Quiron. And it goes for a touchback. Good play by the punter Winslow, the junior from Maple Glen, PA, to get it away. Dedicated in 1996, the Military Heritage Plaza here on Clemson's campus honors the university's alumni who have served the United States in times of war. Clemson alumni have received every medal awarded by the U.S. military, including the Medal of Honor. 75 of these medals are on display at the plaza. And to all those who have served our great country and continue to do so, we salute you.
Levy, Greasy, McShay, 14 all. Pittsburgh here at Clemson. And Deshaun Watson and company take over with the football. And Watson to throw. Quick screen out to the left, Artavis Scott. And he bangs ahead for a few. Jeff Scott told us that's like part of their running game. They want to get Scott in some space with those screen passes. Well, he said, you know, Pittsburgh defensively, they're going to have nine guys in the box because they really count the two safeties as run support players. And so you got to soften that up with throwing that bubble screen on the outside to Renfro and Scott. Second down and five. Fake to Gallman. And the quick throw, Renfro couldn't come up with that. That's intended for number 13. First time Hunter I've seen Renfro. an inaccurate Incomplete. throw from Deshaun and Watson. And the, the interception at the beginning of the game was a poor decision, not, a, not an inaccurate throw. But you got to keep track of, of Deshaun and that, that strength in his shoulder. So we see uh, Pagano, the defensive tackle, going off on crutches. But you got to keep an eye on that strength as the game goes on in the shoulder. Third down and five. Pittsburgh looks like they're going to bring some pressure here. They, then they drop back. They rush four. Watson gets it away. Man, was Leggett wide open. Jordan Leggett. Stopped by Jordan Whitehead, but not until a gain of 29. Well, Leggett at 260 pounds just puts a little bit at the top of the route. Right there with his head. It's a great stem and a stick at the top of your route. Gets Whitehead to move to the middle of the field. He breaks to the out. Able to step into that throw. Plenty of zip on that ball. On first and ten, Watson quick throw out to the right. Artavis Scott. So now they've tried the left side and they've tried the right side. There is a flag on the play. It's almost harder to make those throws where your feet aren't underneath you and you can't drive off your back leg. Those quick throws out in the screens typically are all arm. Holding offense number 73, 10-yard penalty, first down. Tremaine Ankrum. We've seen a lot of different linemen play for Clemson early in this game. We've seen Sean Pollard. Should note That'll that they're playing their second game without the Jake from Origin, who's played uh, started at the right tackle position for most of the season. But we see two new players in this offensive line early. Again, quick pass. Even quicker defensive play for Pittsburgh. Avante Maddox came up and just decked the Clemson player. Oh, it's a scary. This is this is one of the more scary plays that you see in college football. These corners that are knifing in from the outside and the perimeter, and a running back that doesn't see him coming. He's trying to catch the football. It's dangerous for both of them because you get a knee in the head. That's a concussion. Very dangerous play. You want to teach these corners to stay up. But Avante Maddox only goes 5'9", 175 pounds, and so he's concerned about getting run over. Lucky that uh, Gallman was not injured there. We saw that earlier in the year with the yes. lineman, Grant Newsom at Michigan, who uh, just thankfully got out of the hospital. He was in the hospital for over a month because he dislocated that knee, and good to see that Avante Maddox is up, although we don't know that he's going to be able to return to this game. Maddox was just coming back from an elbow injury. He returned last week after missing the previous two games. Boy, it's tough enough. You're asking him to govern Mike Williams all yes. day. Then you got to come up and hit a, a back like and that. And made a big defensive play. Not a lot of depth at corner for Pittsburgh. Second and 26. Those screens not working for Clemson. So now Watson has to throw down the field and nearly intercepted and should have been intercepted by Terrish Webb. He's trying to get That's that That's a reaction. That might have been on Kane, the receiver. Yeah, absolutely right, Todd. That's Kane was in the slot. See if he gets held by Whitehead just a little bit. Whitehead got away with one there because that ball was intended for Kane. Look, I heard a smattering of boobs also here. Third and 26 upcoming. Who in the official? Oh, okay. Never the <laughs> never the players. Not here at Clemson. Watson throwing. Too tall. There is a flag. Looking for Deion Kane. Look like the pass might have been over his head, but there is a penalty down. The penalty marker. 
Pass interference. Defense, number 38, 15-yard penalty. First down. The offensive strategy for Clemson, when in doubt, throw the ball down the field on these corners. And Ryan Lewis is in good position. But what I've seen studying these guys on tape, Steve, and, and Todd and I were talking about this, they get in position, they don't get their head around and play the ball. If you don't do that, if you make any contact at all, you're going to get a pass interference call. That's Wayne Gallman for and once. That was a catchable Gallman. ball for you and, and on, it, that, on that penalty mark. And, and, and what it does, Todd, is that's a 15-yard penalty, so they get a first down, well, able well, to down overcome what was a third and 26. Exactly. And, you know, as we talk to the coaches, some, some teams like Ohio State, they teach to not get your head around to just play the body of the receiver. Pitt, if you're in position, get your head around, but if you're not, then you've got to just play the body. Again, quick screen out to Gallman. This one is much more effective than any of the previous three. Gallman able to spin ahead, and Jordan Whitehead brought him down, but not until Gallman had first down yardage. Yeah, and Todd, that's been a, a, a sore spot for Pat Narduzzi all season. And what they call it in phase or out of phase. And right. if the defender is in phase, it means he's running with the wide receiver and he can turn around and play the ball. If he's out of phase and been beat, then obviously you can't look back. You've got to catch up. Play fake. Watson throwing down the seam. It's juggled and dropped. Artavis Scott couldn't hang on. Good Pass coverage on the play by Terrace Webb. Should have been caught by Scott. Wasn't a perfect throw from Deshaun Watson. Looked like it got tipped by the linebacker, Galambos. Just got a fingernail on it. Should have come down with it, though. Second and ten. Watson looking left the whole way, feels some of the pressure from behind, and he'll run out of bounds from the 30-yard line. Shakir Soto forced him out. Now, we haven't called the number of Juan Price, the uh, star defensive end for Pitt. You know, if they are going to win this game, they need Juan Price to affect the quarterback. You see him there with his patented the shorts. <laughs> Only guy in college football that plays the game with shorts on. It's a bad look. Great player, though. McShay is our fashion guru. Yeah, I kind of like it, man. <laughs> it's definitely different. Here's Watson on the move. Watson throwing off the run. That's Ray Ray McLeod making the grab. Into the red zone. Extending plays, using his feet. There's a good throw from Deshaun Watson. Avante Maddox able to check back into the game. But Ray Ray McLeod beats him for a first down. You're right. The only time we mentioned Juan Price's name was on the penalty, on the late hit on the quarterback. 14 yard gain there. Deshaun up to 217 passing yards so far and looking for more. Making it look easy. Back shoulder throw to Mike Williams. Touchdown, Clemson. Tigers have their first lead of the day. Said at least 15 to 18 of these, Steve. I think this is number five or six. And all of them have either been a big play catch or a pass interference. And that ball's put in a perfect position. When that corner is in phase with the wide receiver, they put the ball on the back shoulder. Here's Hugel to push it through. Clemson, number two in the country. Their first lead of the day. College football presented by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Pacific Life. Helping generations of families achieve long-term financial security for over 145 years. And Jaguar. The art of performance. See those logos in the stairwell here at Clemson. It used to be that they would have the opposition's logo. And then they figured out, you know what? The only team that can beat Clemson is Clemson beating themselves. So they made it all Clemson logos. They're just the dates of their games. Five minutes in, quarter number two. 21-14. Clemson, their first lead of the day. Hugo will kick it away. Quadri Henderson is yet to be able to return a kick. And that's part of the strategy of the kickoffs. The only advantage Pittsburgh might have over Clemson in this game is that guy right there, Quadri Henderson. And that's the fear with kicking away from him. You kick it out of bounds and you get the penalty. 
take a look at today's AT&T Inside Access. That's Clemson defense coordinator Brent Venables. On the scout team, he's the quarterback. Yeah, during the week of practice, he loves to be the scout team quarterback. And you see uh, Christian Wilkins there, 42, <laughs> Russian. He got a little too close to coach this week. You know, gave him a little bit of chin, or as we say, nose music. <laughs> you see the scar on Venable's nose there? He's able to laugh about it now. <laughs> Not sure he's laughing at the time. Brings a lot of intensity to practice on that defensive side for Clemson. On first down and 10. Peterman had it knocked away. And that will go as an incomplete pass. Jalen Williams able to bat it down. Well, that, that, that may seem like it's fun, you know, for, for your coach to go back there and play quarterback. It is very intentional for Brent Venables. He feels like he sees his defense, how they rotate better. He said, I can I can control the tempo of the offense. I know the signals. I know how when to send a guy in motion. I can coach a guy up. I can coach a linebacker right there from the line of scrimmage and stop practice. So it gives him a lot of control. And Christian Wilkins and the rest of these guys on defense really benefit from it. Watching him, it, it never looked like Venables played quarterback at any level, I would say. Peterman throwing down the field, has a man looking for Jester Wea, and just a bit too far. They're going to have three, four, five of these shots downfield, and when you get them, it's going to be Wea. He's been their big play receiver, hard play action, and Peterman just throws it two feet too far. That's the matchup you want against Ryan Carter, who's a good corner, but not as good as Cordea uh, Tankersley on the opposite side, who has more size and a little bit more speed. So, Adam just missed on the deep shot. That's been Peterman's strength, though. Accuracy down the field. He'll need to throw it again on third and ten. Takes a big hit as he releases, and that is dropped. There is a penalty flag. Went back for Wea. Mark Fields was there on the coverage. What a throw from Nathan Peterman. He got walloped in the backfield and put that ball in the breadbasket. Holding. Holding. Defense. 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 Number two. Two. Ten Defense. yard penalty. Defense. First down. Yeah, you get the penalty from, from Fields, but take a look at this throw. I mean, under pressure, all out blitz. I mean, you put that right on the money to Wea, and when Wea comes back to the huddle as a quarterback, so look, man. I'm getting, I'm under siege back here. You see the size of these guys up front for Clemson? <laughs> Catch the ball. <laughs> good footwork there. No question. So he didn't like his arm work on the throws, but good like footwork. footwork yeah. Here's Peterman off the play fake. Again, throwing down the field. Little push off there, but Scott Orndorff has it. And he will go in for the touchdown. And that will silence the crowd for the time being. Wow! 55 yards on the score. Orndorff says, I could do that, Mike Williams. You know, just throw the ball up to me. I'm 6'6", 260 pounds. Here he is right here. He gets matched up on Bullware, and that's a matchup in the favor of the Panthers. Great design, another great design from Canada. And right there, Bullware's not in a position. He can't look back for the football. Orndorf makes a pay. So how about that? The pass interference was the key play on that 80-yard drive by Clemson, overcame a third and 26. And defensive holding, in essence, does the same thing for Pittsburgh, gets them a first down. No good on the extra point. Hits the upright. Chris blew it. And that's his name. Come on. You think I'm making it up? <laughs> Chris Blewett, the kicker, had missed one prior point after this season. And that's the second. So one point, Clemson lead. Aflac. Thank you. At today's Aflac trivia question, when was the last time Pittsburgh defeated a team ranked in the AP top five? Oh. Stop uh, reading the notes, Greasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a better question than the last two weeks, you know? We, yeah. The truck, the questions have been a little uh, suspect. I see. I like that. 
Yeah, watch it, Greasy. <laughs> oh, did you come up with yeah, that? Well, two weeks two ago. Weeks ago I stumped you guys, shed. and you've been sore about it since. There's Arteta Scott on the return. And there's no way Clemson thought they'd be trailing by one with nine and a half to play in the first half. I do not believe. Pittsburgh is more than just hanging around against the beasts of the ACC, especially the Atlantic Division. They win this game today. They will clinch the Atlantic Division. And if you look at it, and they're certainly hoping this is the case, they can have five more games left to play yeah, after certainly. today. And, you know, that number two there, team there, Louisville, you know, everybody wrote them off for dead a couple of weeks ago when the first college football playoff rankings came out. But I am not so sure that Louisville will not be there in that top four at the end. Certainly, there is a path. Here's Wayne Gallman, the ball carrier. Wayne Gallman. Here's Pat Narduzzi with his kicker. Chris blew it right after the extra point was missed off the upper. I like that approach, you know? I mean, you cannot let that fester. Yeah, he gave him a kiss on the side of the head. Yeah, he got a smile from him. And the kiss. That's a great, uh, Pat Narduzzi's a great coach. Great football coach. He's trying to turn this thing around a bit. Second down and two. Watson's going to be taken down. Sacked for the first time. This time it's Jeremiah Teleni bringing him down. Finally, some pressure on the quarterback from Pitt defensively. I understand you're not you're playing without Tyreek Jarrett. Rory Blair has been banged up. Juan Price hasn't called his name, but this team came in with 29 sacks on a year. That's top 10 in college football. And if they're going to pull this upset off, they have half to affect Deshaun Watson. Third down and four. That was McLeod in motion, top of your screen. Here's Watson under some pressure. Throws across the body to Jordan Leggett. And he's across midfield on Jordan Whitehead. Leggett has the first down. May be the best part of Deshaun Watson's game. When he extends with his feet, he keeps his eyes downfield. Look at that. He finds Leggett all the way on the other side of the field. He was reading the right side of the field. And for him to pick up Leggett free on the back side is impressive. I think they're going with the Elvis play here. On first down and 10. Gain of 21 to leg it there. And it's Wayne Goldman, the ball carrier. Wayne Goldman. Pickup of two. Three yard pickup on the play. Number 45, Devon Edwards with the tackle. Sean Watson has gone over 10,000 career total yards. Just the sixth player in ACC history to do so. First ever to do it as a junior. Watson will add to those totals. Hits McLeod. Tried to curl in for the big game and slip down. Bring up a third down. Seen a little bit more nickel personnel on against the four wide receiver sets of Clemson from Pitt, realizing that the Mike Williams issue is, is real. They can't cover him one-on-one -on -one and trying to get a little bit more safety help over the top. Third down and nine. Looks like a pressure look here from Pitt. They're coming. Watson throwing. Too high. Tipped and intercepted. Avante Maddox on the interception. And intercepted by number 14, Avante Maddox. And Watson is down and now gets up slowly. Allen Edwards put the knock on Watson. Uh, you're going to see this pressure here affects the ability for Deshaun Watson to throw the ball accurately. He knows he's got to get rid of it. Coming inside on him and just throws it a little bit high. Deion Kane, a young player, sophomore. I'd like to see him go up with two hands there. I understand the danger, but that's how you gain respect as a receiver. Go up, catch the football. You go up with one hand, tip an interception. All of a sudden, the quarterback's like, wait a minute, man. I got hit back here in the pocket. Go up with two hands. So Clemson's three touchdowns have been surrounded by Deshaun Watson throwing interceptions. And now Pittsburgh down by one with the ball. And it's James Conner, a big gain. He's still on his feet, rumbling out past the 40-yard line. James Conner's like a Boeing 767. It takes him a little bit of time to get going down the runway, but if you let him get going and gain momentum, he is brutal to bring down in the open field. 26 yards there. Throwing to Connor now. 
and yeah. picks up a gate of five. We were talking with him last night, and you know, the guy he reminds me of, and I don't throw this name around lightly, is Larry Zonka. When my dad played with Larry Zonka, I watched a lot of tape on Larry. He's got that kind of quality. Little shovel to Orndorff. And looks like he has first down yardage. What I was impressed about was a lot of these young guys don't know the great old players. He said he had heard the Zonka comparison yep. before. Another wild shift here for Matt Canada. They've got their tackle lined up outside. That's O'Neill. He's a converted tight end, and they love to use him in creative situations. Darren Hill is the single setback now in the game. Hall, I beg your pardon. That is Hall, the ball carrier. Gain of three. His first carry of the game. O'Neill, we talked about. He's the only offensive tackle probably in college football that has two rushing touchdowns on the season. But that's you know that that's a coordinator using all of his resources. There you see young Brian O'Neill. Appreciate they're not one or two yard touchdowns. No. There's a five yard touchdown and he had a 24 yard touchdown against Georgia Tech on a throwback lateral. Well, and he was a tight end. He was 250 and now he's gotten up to 300 pounds and very athletic at that tackle position. Pittsburgh looking good across midfield. Off the play fake. Peterman throwing down the sideline couldn't hook up with Chester Wee and just a bit too tight. That's the first missed decision for me with Nathan Peterman. He had the fullback in the flat. He's right here. It's second down and eight. Give him the football. He's going to get a first down. He forces the ball down the field incomplete. And you, gotta, you, you can't make those mistakes and beat the number two team on the road. Third down and seven. Coach Narduzzi knows that too. 0 for 3 so far in third down conversions. Here's Peterman under pressure throwing a little of a jump ball. Orndorff went up for it. A flag comes. It's going to be pass interference on Van Smith. They're calling it one way for Mike Williams and Deion Kane. And they're going to call it for Orndorff too. Pass interference. Defense. Number 23, 15-yard penalty. And I'll just, I mean, I'll just go on record. I don't like these, you know, a lot of these pass interference calls. The balls, that that's a good one. That's a good one. But when in doubt, I say let them play. Oh man, that's a rough hit there. Both quarterbacks taking the beating back there. Willing to hang in the pocket. See the penalty yardage starting to add up. On first down and 10, it's Connor who else breaks it up the middle. Plenty of running room, and he's all the way down to the seven yard line of Clemson. Here come the Panthers. This is the number one run for Pitt. The inside zone with the lead block from 35 Aston. You get James Connor going. This offense is tough to stop. Timeout. Clemson, their first timeout of the half. Pittsburgh Full wanted to go out. fast there. Yep, absolutely. And that was and Narduzzi had some epic battles when Narduzzi's at Michigan State and Canada was at Wisconsin. And uh, Pat Narduzzi, I think, hit a home run, bringing him to Pitt. First down and goal for the Panthers. Handoff, Connor. And it's a loss on the play. And thrown back is actually Darren Hall. On the loss on the play on first and goal. Bring up a second goal now. This pit offense, they've had three coordinators in three years. Remember, Paul Chris was here, then left to go to Wisconsin. Jim Cheney was here a, a year ago, left to go to Georgia. So this offense, these players in particular, have had to have three different systems. Very hard. And for them to be able to execute at this level against this kind of defense, that's impressive. Second down and goal. Peterman will drop back. Four on the play clock. Option. Peterman's going to keep it. Cut back inside. And he's dropped down at the one. Stopped by Kendall Joseph. These plays go together, Steve. It's the same play. It's a shovel to Orndorff right here. But no, he keeps it instead because Clemson makes the adjustment. It's a great job by Peterman. It's almost like. We talk with Brent Venables about it's almost like defending the Georgia Tech triple option when they run that play in particular. 
I got to think Connor here at the one. Third and goal. It is Connor, but he doesn't get there. Fourth and goal, trailing by a point from the one. That's a good call. I don't think he got in. At the very end, Bullware came and cleaned up. Right there, nice job by the Mike linebacker. That's your job as a Mike on the goal line is to finish that runner when he's making that extra effort for the goal line. They are massive up front defensively, Clemson is. They may take a little bit of a trick play here, or something that's not right up the middle against Lawrence, Watkins, and Wilkins. You like this decision here? I agree, Todd, yeah, and I think if you're gonna do something, it might be the fullback Aston. Off the play fake. Throwing, back of the end zone, caught. Touchdown, it's George Aston, as correctly predicted by my partner, and Pittsburgh retakes the lead on fourth and goal. George Aston, I think, is their most versatile player. We've already seen him score a touchdown on a little flip. He's He's been the lead blocker for James Conner. I think he's the most complete football player on offense for Pitt, and that time they get him in a position to catch the corner out. Here's Chris Blewett. He missed the extra point the last time around. Hit it off the left upright to his left. And that one is right down the middle. You know, Matt Canada, he might not have the best and most athletic players, but he does have versatile players. And you put your fullback in a wing, you fake it to Connor. They have to respect that. And I thought that that ball was a little bit late. I saw him come open right away, and Nathan Peterman Kind of held it, but uh, was able to get that football out over the outstretched arms for the touchdown. Are, are we glossing over the decision at all? Was there any thought to kick the field goal there? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Steve, I mean, you're you're on the road against the number two team in the country. You know your defense is going to give up a bunch of points. You got to get points when you're down there. Pat Narduzzi, I don't think thought twice about it. In the end, it's the right call. 27-21, Pittsburgh. Give them confidence too. You know, you give your, your team confidence. They're trying to do. They're trying to get a signature win. They want to go in at halftime with the lead. That'll bounce out of the end zone. Take a look at today's Aflac trivia question and answer it. When was the last time Pittsburgh defeated a team ranked in the AP top five? Aflac. And this is a good time to ask that question. I tried to get hints in the break. I got nothing for it. What does McShay have? I, I'd say 2005. Pretty close. Well, who was it, McShay? 2007. Uh, beat number two, two West Virginia. Uh, I thought Miami or Virginia Tech. So 13 to 9. Did it in Morgantown. LaShawn McCoy went off for 148 yards wow. on the ground. Here's Watson to throw. Able to hook up with Mike Williams. Who else? That's a great adjustment there the by Clemson. So they go to play a two deep defense to protect their corners. Pat Narduzzi does. So what does Clemson do? They run a different route with Mike Williams. A little out route into the voided zone for a big first down. 17 yards on the play. Here's Watson. He'll step up. And he'll keep it. Won't take a shot to that shoulder as he runs out of bounds exactly at midfield. You got to be careful here, you know, because this team, this this offense can score in a hurry. And if you're Pat Narduzzi, they went up six. You could very easily give up a touchdown here before halftime. Two timeouts left for Clemson. Minute 50 away from halftime. Watson throwing. Far side of the field, Artavis Scott. So earlier in the year, I think it was 39 seconds they scored right before the half against Louisville kind of helped turn things around. Yeah, it's a great point, Todd. They got their First rhythm going. The they didn't do a whole lot at the beginning of that game, and Sean Watson didn't look sharp, but that two-minute drill really propelled them into the second half where they almost played flawless. It was one of the more entertaining football games of the entire college season. Watson looking left the whole way and throwing to his left. It hits Jordan Leggett. 
Clemson moving right down the field. No pass rush. You give number four that much time and space to survey the field and, and step into a throw, and he's going to make it. And all these throws now outside the numbers. Nothing middle of the field. So Watson, 300 yards passing, and we're not at halftime. Again, throwing outside, again completing. It's Williams again. Brought down in the play by number three. I don't know DeMar if Clemson is going to run the ball again the remainder of the game. <laughs> Williams, eight catches, 142 yards. Targeted eight times, he's grabbed them all. No drops today so far. Second and two. Watson trying the right side off for size. Has a Tavis Scott touchdown. Drops a dime. And Clemson back on top. Can't throw it much better than this, partner. Put it right on the outside shoulder. Or Tavis Scott really just had to put his hands up. Pat Narduzzi's got to get his corners to turn their heads and look for the football. Otherwise, this could turn into a Big 12 game. Extra point is good. There was 69 seconds left in the first half. The difference in the half is a missed extra point by Pittsburgh. That has to be disheartening for the Panthers. They take the lead on a fourth and goal, and Clemson marches right down the field and scores. Look at this. You're going to see Avante Maddox is in great position, in phase as we call it. You got to turn your head around because if you if you don't, it's just it's too easy. If you don't turn your head, you're never going to have a chance to play the football, and it's always going to be a completion. And Greece, the guy or gal at home on the couch is, is wondering. They coach them like that. They coach they, them. I, I had I had a feeling we might be dealing with this today. They teach okay. them to not look back for the ball. How is that possible? No, they don't teach them. At least Pitt, anyways. Other teams may, but ask Coach Narduzzi last night. I said, how do you teach these guys? He says, if they're in phase, meaning if they're right next to the receiver, we need to turn our heads and play the football. If you're out of phase, meaning you're beat by a couple of yards, obviously you can't look back. Okay, you got to catch up. But they've been in position, they've been in phase, they're just not looking back. So the exact opposite of the coaching technique. Finally, we get a return from Quadri Henderson. Not much doing there. He's dropped at the 13. Coming up at the half. Stay tuned for Stan Barrett, Mark May, Matt Brown, the Capital One halftime report for all the scores and highlights from around college football. Hope you're enjoying this Saturday. Veterans Day weekend here at Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. What a football game. And Greece, if this keeps up, they might not invite us back. <laughs> we were here for the yes. NC State game, which Clemson should have lost, if yep. not for a missed, relatively speaking, chip shot field goal at the end by the Wolfpack. 33 yards, yeah. That throw, is that a completion? What a catch. What a throw and what a catch. Jester Wea able to haul it in. Now quarter air Tankersley looks back for the football there. Doesn't see it, but look at that one-handed catch by Wea. We talked about the drop he had earlier. Coming back to the huddle, he got it that time. Had a fistful of jersey, too. Here's Connor, who's ripped off some big runs in this first half. Connor's 10th carry of the day. He's up to 95 yards on the ground. Also has a 44 yard touchdown catch. 40 seconds left in the half. It's Connor again. Not going to turn that into much. I get a timeout. Yep. Pittsburgh has two left. They'll spend one here with 32 seconds left. Boy, yeah, t tight game, Steve. The story so far in this first half has been Deshaun Watson. Came in not knowing his Pacific Life game summary, not knowing if his shoulder was going to be ready to play. But 321 yards in the first half, he has given his wideouts an opportunity to make plays down the field. But Nathan Peterman says, I could do just as well. Four touchdowns. He's been on points, taking some big shots. And halftime, 
in that Clemson locker room, I think Brett Venables is going to have words with his defense. That, to me, is the real story of this first half. 340 yards of offense given up by this defense who, coming in, we thought was one of the top four or five in the country. No question. Handoff, it's Darren Hall. Has the first down. Stops the clock momentarily. Now it rolls. Here's Peterman. Plenty of time trying to get out of there, and he's dropped. Taken down. Carlos Watkins able to bring him down with 17 seconds left in the half. Nice job by Carlos Watkins. Just ran down the uh, ran down the hill on senior day. He's kind of just waiting on him, you know, waiting on him, giving the uh, rope a dope. That could turn out to be a three-point sack right there. If Peterman throws that ball away or gets out of kicks out of a tackle and gets down to the 25 30 yard line Pitt may go in at halftime with the lead as it is now 17 seconds and no timeouts Chris blue who we mentioned who missed the extra point does have a big leg in fact he has made four career field goals of 50 yards or more so they're really just trying to get into his field goal range back to the quarterback comparison Peterman has four touchdowns no interceptions Sean Watson's thrown two interceptions in this first half there you see Blewett getting the big leg ready. Again, his missed extra point is the only thing that separates these two teams right now. 17 seconds left, second and 15. Pittsburgh out of timeouts. Peterman throwing and completing to Wea. Just short of the first down with 10 seconds left. Yep. Didn't get the first down, so they got to come up and spike. And they do. The senior quarterback right there doing a great job. First of all, the only reason you're aggressive coming out of your own own end zone is because of Peterman being a senior and a veteran. You trust him, and then to put him in position there with the clock ticking down, really heads up veteran play. Yep. You talk about that in the timeout, Todd. You know, you're over there on the sideline. We're going to throw this inside inside breaking cut, and if you get him on the ground, you guys have to rush up there and spike the football. This will be from 53 yards away. For Chris Blewett. And it's blocked. Looked like Dabble wanted the timeout. George Aston is able to fall on it. Dabble wanted the timeout and didn't get it. <laughs> He called the timeout to freeze Kyle Bambard from NC State at the end of that game, and it worked out for him. He tried to call this timeout. He didn't get it, and that worked out for him, too. He was lucky there. That's, you know, that's blocked by his own offensive. That went off the back of Alex Bookser, his own guard. That was a low kick. Never had a chance to get up and get in. How about that ending? to a wild first half. Come on back after halftime. Exciting thing, most thing we didn't anticipate was this offense for Pittsburgh, they were lights out, 356 yards of offense in the first half. And we look forward to some more. Clemson gets the ball to start the second half. Artavis Scott. We'll bring it out to the 20. Down to Todd McShay. Guys, it's been the Deshaun Watson show. Talked about senior day. Watson, you see right behind him, Mike Williams. That's been the connection all day long. 321 passing yards in the first half. A career high for Watson. And a whole bunch of them went to number seven, Williams. He's done a great job going up for the 50-50 ball. Defenders hanging from him, making the big catch, bringing it down. We, I'll tell you what, both of these quarterbacks, Peterman and Watson, have been big game so far today. And impressive on the Mike Williams side of things. He's been targeted eight times, and they have eight completions. Here's Wayne Gallman trying to turn the corner and can't. Matt Galambos made sure of that. You know, that, that. That's one of the things, the questions I have in the second half for Clemson offense. Are they even going to try to rush the football? 
because in the first half, got this stat from our legendary Marty Aronoff. They had 19 first downs, not one of them rushing the football. 17 through the air and two by penalty. Second and ten, throwing to Ray Ray McLeod, tries to curl inside, maybe has a yard, bring up third down long. And I think they need to. I think they need to run the ball with Gallman because as good as Mike Williams has been, as good as Deshaun Watson has been, there can be some adjustments by Pitt defensively playing more too deep defense. I anticipate that from Pat Narduzzi and not leave these corners on an island. Third and eight. Watson throwing to the right and completing to McLeod. Has the first down. On that time, they played a too deep defense to Mike Williams' side, but they didn't do it to McLeod. They gave him easy access to the outside, and that's just a pitch and catch for a first down. You got to play some, and I know Pat Narduzzi, great defensive mind, great coach, and he's going to do what he does, but you got to make some adjustments in this game. Halftime adjustments always fascinating. Here's Gallman, who is not getting the yardage on the ground, has, let's say, 27 yards for the game. His next 100 yard game will set the school record. And in talking with Jeff Scott, Gallman doesn't get the opportunity because defenses play Clemson, they play against the run. That allows the passing game to open up and allows Watson to get those big numbers himself. But the run game isn't featured that way. That's deflected at the line of scrimmage on second and nine. And that's, I mean, sitting at home listening to this broadcast, that's surprising. Why would you let the Heisman Trophy winner just throw the football on the outside? Especially right? with the targets he has, like Ab Mike Williams. Absolutely. I would make Clemson show me they can run the football. Go the other way. That's why you and I are right up here, right where we belong. <laughs> Clemson, 8 of 10 third down conversion rates. That's roughly 80%. On third and nine. That one goes through the hands of Ray Ray McLeod. Wow. And, and that's the same coverage, same route of the last third down. And Pitt was giving it to him again. That time the corner Hamlin is a true freshman, plays off, easy access, and Ray Ray McLeod just goes right through his hands. And this gives us a good opportunity to introduce you to Andy Teasdall, because Clemson did not punt in the first half, as Dabo told Todd on his way to the locker room. Quadri Henderson who is the big play return specialist for Pittsburgh, standing at the 30. Teasdall gets it away. And it will bounce and be down at the 31-yard line. Well, if you're just joining us for the second half, 27 points by this Pittsburgh offense in the first half. And it was creativity by offensive coordinator Matt Canada. They used George Aston as their kind of Swiss Army knife lines up in all kinds of different places. You get a fake by James Conner that affects the defense, and it's a creative little shuttle shovel pass on a power was the first touchdown drive. Then a little bit of a creativity here using James Conner not just to run the football, but in the passing game. Fake power by the quarterback, and he's wide open for another touchdown. Does Matt Canada have enough in the in the bank in the second half to continue to make plays? On first down and ten. Off the play fake. Quick screen out to Orndorff, who's been a big factor in that first half. And he's shy of first down yardage. Dorian O'Daniel on the tackle. That was another creative look. We saw a lot of the shovel passes, as you mentioned, to the tight ends or, or uh, to Aston, the number 35, the fullback. But there they just bring the tight end Orndorff against the, really against the grain as they're working the mess to the left side and then just dump it off for a nice screen. Five catches, 94 yards for Scott Orndorff, the senior from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Second and two. Quick screen out into the flat. Not quick enough. Able to complete to Aaron Matthews. But the defense and Ryan Carter were right there. There's too much space between the wideouts. You see Henderson is responsible for coming over there to get that block. It's a great response from Ryan Carter. The senior beats the block of Henderson. Pittsburgh led Miami a week ago 21 to 20 and then were stopped on 10 of their next 11 possessions. So here's a big third and five with that in mind. It's Dantes Ford in motion. And a little pitch forward to Ford. And he has the first down. 
very effective all afternoon into the early evening. It's a great play. It looks great, too. I mean, it's, it's well designed. You can stretch the defense, and it hits so quick up the middle. Now you see a wide receiver doing it. We saw a fullback. We've seen a tight end. Now Dantes Ford and Brent Venables knows that he's got his hands full here in the second half. You don't see that look from Venables very often, where he's not yelling and screaming. He's kind of saying, all right, man, listen, I just got to hold on here and find a way to slow this offense down. That's Henderson in motion. Now he'll zoom back the other way. Let me know when I'm overusing that. Off the play fake. Here's Peterman. Step up and thrown down. Ball is loose. Dorian O'Donnell able to rock Peterman's world. And it leads to the turnover on the Clemson football. Dexter Lawrence able to recover the fumble. You can have all the creative plays you want, but if you bring pressure on the quarterback, as Clemson does, you can throw all that out the window. They're trying to throw the ball back to James Conner. They want a big play. Dorian Daniel reads it, and the speed to the quarterback creates a turnover. We got to credit the coverage, too, because if you don't cover Conner down the field, that's another touchdown down the sideline. Dorian O'Daniel knocked out Syracuse quarterback Eric Dungy last week. Dungy was the ACC leader in passing yards. Puts the big hit on the quarterback there and leads to the turnover. Here's Artavis Scott with first down yardage. That was Pittsburgh's first, da first turnover of the football game. We'll check the flag. Holding. Offense. Number one. Ten yard penalty. First down. Well, and, and the reason that that offense for Pittsburgh has been so explosive this year is they have protected the football. They've only lost 10 turnovers on the season. Nate Peterman's only thrown four interceptions. And, and that's that's a situation there where you try to make a big play and you just got to eat the football and protect it. They protected the football and the quarterback. Pittsburgh's only allowed six sacks right. on the season. That's a statement in itself. First and 15 after they pick up the marker. Out into the flat, able to get it quickly to Hunter. Renfro makes some people miss, and he's down the sideline. Jordan Whitehead able to upend him, but not until Renfro has the big game. Renfro's got such quick feet. You get him the ball in space. Great block by Artavis Scott. And then that's Parrish Webb on the back end who's missed a lot of tackles this year and another one Renfro makes him pay and unfortunately for Pittsburgh looks like Jordan Whitehead their best player in the secondary came down still down on the sideline that's a 25 yard gain against these wide receivers for Clemson I mean, that is the one area of the field they could not afford to, to lose one of their better players off the play fake Watson will go up top of course he will Deion Kane touchdown make it look easy the quick strike after the lengthy delay and Clemson back on top after the 27 yard strike from Deshaun Watson teams that play Clemson Tigers are going to start to understand it's not just a one man show at the wide receiver position of Mike Williams. Deion Kane has become a viable option on the other side of the field. You get Deion Kane one on one on a true freshman that's Hamlin on the outside. That's easy touchdown for Deshaun Watson. College football presented by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. Brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited double miles you can use on any airline, anytime. A good look at the members of the Armed Forces proudly displaying the blue and gold of Pitt as they root for the Panthers here. At home and abroad, we salute all of our nation's veterans, past and present, and thank you. Thank you very much for all of your service. No question. 
shouldn't need a special day or a weekend no, just to do it, right? No, it but be it's, an it's a great coast. reminder. You yes. Know? Biggest lead of the game by either team is eight. And that's thanks to this last touchdown for Clemson. You know, if you're sitting at home, you say, well, why doesn't Pittsburgh do something different? Here's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's going to be an easy route to the outside, but you got to get some of these safeties helping over the top so that you can then roll up a corner and have two-on-one. But you see here, the safety's too close, worried about the run game, and he's no help to the corner on the outside, and that's that's just too easy. You and can't this is, continue to do that. And this is why we've seen Mitch Trubisky and Jared Evans and Brad Kaya and, and uh, Mason Rudolph from Oklahoma State. They've combined for 439 passing yards per game coming into this one. Eventually, you got to find the personnel that can run it, or you got to change your scheme. Hand off to James Conner. He'll pick up two on the play. Well, if we know anything about Pat Narduzzi, we know he's not going to change his scheme. And he's trying to implement something. He's trying to teach it. And I, and I get that. But at the same time, you're on the road. You were in a one-point game against the number two team in the country, and they haven't run the ball at all. Sounds stubborn to me. Second down and eight. Again, the shifting. Put the tackles in motion. You saw Brian O'Neill go from right to left. And it's Connor, and he is dragged down by Carlos Watkins for a loss. And just to go back to Narduzzi for a second, just so everyone's clear, he's one of the great defensive minds in, in football. And there are so many people around the country who go and watch his clinics and the way he teaches technique. They've had a lot of inju injuries in the secondary. He does not have the personnel he had at Michigan State, and eventually he's hoping to get there. But I do, I do agree with you. I think he, there's a little bit of stubbornness on his part. There's no dark quiz, Denard or Trey Waynes on Pitt's roster right now. Third and nine. Forward in motion. There's Peterman. Takes a big shot as he releases. And that play that was there in the first half, unable to complete the Jester Wea, but there is a flag. Cordray Tankersley in the coverage. Pass interference. Defense, number 25. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. That's Tankersley, one of the semifinalists for the Thorpe Award. Boy, we've seen so many of these types of plays, personal foul penalties. Or sorry, excuse me, pass interference. And I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I didn't see a penalty right there. It's got, it's got to a point where you know quarterback drops back throw in the vicinity of a wide receiver and get a call. It comes a play. It's an offensive play. Here's Connor out of the backfield off the screen. And he has the first down. That's complete to number 24, James Connor. Now we're going to see this tempo. You know, normally Pitt will wait until they get their first first down, and then they'll change the tempo. Will shovel to Orndorff, the tight end, who has been heavily involved in this pit offense and everything they do throughout this game. And finally, they make the adjustment on the shovel and they pinch the defensive end, Cleveland Farrell. They're getting tired of giving up 15, 20, 25 yards on that one play. Nice adjustment by Brent Venables. When you get beaten on that shovel, it makes you look foolish. It, it has to be embarrassing for the defense. It looks like it's such a little it, nothing that turns into something. Yeah, it's it's really the same play we see from a lot of spread teams that do it with their quarterback. They're just adding a shovel element to it because they don't want to run their quarterback. Ford, top of your screen. That's Orndorff in motion. And here's Peterman. Second and eight, running. Nearly a face mask. And a throw it away. Carlos Watkins had the pressure. He wants the face mask call. Well, he, that referee should tell him, listen, I gave you a P.I. on the last play. <laughs> Don't push your luck. <laughs> That's a good decision. Get rid of the football. You're on, outside the pocket, understanding where you are. Notice another adjustment from Venables on that play, playing a little bit more zone. We talked with coaching staff on the way off the field, and they said maybe we should play some more zone, and they played a three-deep zone there on the last play. Third and eight just across midfield. There is a flag. Peterman will take off and be dragged down from behind. 
Ryan Carter, Ryan Carter made the tackle, but it looked like I thought Clemson might have jumped offside. Offside. Defense. Number 99. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Cleveland Farrell. He gave him credit for making a nice adjustment on the last play. But see if he jumps early. Yep. You didn't believe me? Just double check here. Check the replay. Nine penalties so far in the game. That's the first five yard penalty in the game. Big third down right here. And if I were Nate Peterman, I might go on a hard count again because you get a free first down if you get Cleveland Farrell to jump. Shovel pass again. Not going to get there. Dantes Ford. And a flag comes late. I was going to say, we'll see where he stopped his forward motion. After Might not matter. Personal foul on a setting up this number 10. 15 more penalty. Okay. Boy, and I, I, don't, I don't blame Davo Sweeney one bit. I mean, there's too much laundry on the field for me. There's too much. And you make a stop, yeah, and, and is there a whistle? You know, he's trying to get the guy to the ground. That's what football is about. Keep the flag in your pocket. If there was a whistle, you, you can't hear it down here. It's right, so loud. Yeah, exactly, Todd. I mean, they don't even factor that in. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's too much right now. Let the kids play the game. It's about as hot as you'll see Dabo. Fresh set of downs. Cotter, the ball carrier, straight handoff. And Davo's still giving it to the referee, and I don't blame him, but, but, you let one play go, now, now you gotta move on. Now, what's done is done. You gotta look forward to the next snap on defense, get your composure. Davo's one of the more experienced guys. He, he understands that, and uh, he'll move forward. Can't blame him. James Cotter over 100 yards on the ground for the game. Second and five upcoming. Second trip into the red zone for Pittsburgh. Third, I beg your pardon. Peterman is dropped. See where they spot this. <laughs> Dorian O'Daniel, another lick on the quarterback. And another first down and another change of tempo. I mean, it's, well, they didn't make third short. Connor bangs his way through. Inside the 10, and it'll bring up first and goal. Such a physical runner. I mean, there, there wasn't there wasn't a yard there, but he made a yard. Right back at you. They go quick. Here's Connor trying to turn the corner on the outside. Dorian O'Daniel forces him out. Man, O'Daniel's been the man here. As ever since halftime, he's really picked up his play. Uh, look at the emotion of James Conner. Look at his stiff arm. I mean, that thing, you give O'Daniel credit. He fought through it. That, if you're a defensive tackle or offensive tackle, they call that illegal hands to the face. But running back is the only position you can get away with that. Great, give uh, some credit to O'Daniel, get him out of bounds. Is that the Larry Zonka right there? Absolutely. <laughs> Hall is the setback to the left of Peterman. Option, shovel, armed off, touchdown! Pittsburgh! And up is Scott Horned off for the touchdown. They've seen this play eight or nine times, and it's so difficult to defend. You're gonna see great blocks. Watch the block by the offensive tackle, and then you wrap around and you get a kick out. This is just a power play, Steve. We see it every week in college football. It's just a little bit of a different wrinkle. And when you have Connor on the previous play outside, it adds a little bit of sting. Trailing by two, they're gonna kick the extra point here. Here's Chris Blewett who missed one earlier. He's got that one. Don't chase points too early. Maybe. Pittsburgh responds to the Clemson touchdown with an 11-yard, 11 11-play, 11 75-yard drive. Something's going on. Clemson 
tonight with four and a half to play in the third quarter. People are starting to call their buddies. Say, hey, you see what's going on at Clemson? 35-34. Second-ranked tag Tigers at home against the unranked Panthers at Pitt. Here's our Taylor Scott from his two. Hop, skip, and a jun. And he's taken down. While we were away in the television commercial, Dabble was still giving it to Dwayne Haight, the referee, and his crew, giving him the business because of a 15-yard personal foul penalty that was called. Listen for the whistle here. I mean, Ben Bowler is making the tackle as the whistle is being blown. You're not going to stop once you start making that play. And I disagree with official hate. That was a poor call. I'm with you and Dabo for now. Clemson right back, facing a little adversity. When in doubt, Sean Watson will go to Mike Williams. This crowd is booing after every snap. <laughs> they said they love their Clemson. Yeah. They don't like the officials. They love their Clemson. <laughs> Second and two. Quick out into the flat. Tartavis Scott has the first down. And he'll go out of bounds. You know about number one. Number two's in some trouble here. What about number three? Tonight on ABC Saturday Night Football, Jabril Peppers, an undefeated number three, Michigan. They'll visit Iowa under the lights. Wolverines, Hawkeyes, presented by Walmart. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, also available streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. Watson on first down, chased a bit, finds Mike Williams. And Williams will take on some people as he crosses midfield. We've talked a lot about these corners, you know, Ryan Lewis, Avante Maddox, and how much yardage this team has given up through the passing game. A little bit of that needs to be on Pat Narduzzi in this scheme because they're giving it these flats on every single throw. They're wide open. Hand off to Gallman. Trying to pick through some holes. A secondary already shorthanded. In the case of just joining us, Jordan Whitehead, their outstanding strong safety, had to leave the game with a gruesome injury. Looked like a certainly looked like a broken arm the way he went down. Reggie Mitchell has replaced Whitehead in that already depleted pit secondary. Second and five. There's Mitchell. Watson a throw. What else is new? Down the sideline. Octavius Scott was wide open. Cuts it to the middle of the field looking for more. It's really becoming a, a lack of awareness by Ryan Lewis. He's on the outside. He's got a little help over the top this time. He just keeps running. And Ortega Scott is aware. Comes back for the football. You, you lose confidence. You know, these corners, uh, they get beat. They've been beaten a number of times on the outside and they start to lose confidence and I think these officials want to take a look whether Artavis Scott stepped out of bounds when he was coming back. Like that right heel is what they wanted to look at. This would be a great look here. And I think that's a good catch. Boy, if they overturn this call, look out. <laughs> McShay, <laughs> grab a helmet. They might need an escort on the way out. I'm going to need security. I'm impressed with the fans, though. Real commitment to booing every single play. <laughs> <laughs> there's commitment to excellence, and then there's commitment to booing on every play. At the review. They still boo. Yes. They're so used to booing. <laughs> it's so loud they couldn't hear it. Deshaun Watson, a career high 450 passing yards. That shoulder will get healthy real fast, you know, going up against this pit defense. Opportunity to put up numbers like that, you know, you're not going to sit out. Four yards shy of Taj Boyd's record. He'll throw again. It's Artavis Scott. 
And he'll jump over to Fender out of bounds with the 12. The last time we were here for the NC State game, Watson set his own record, a career high, and a school record with 39 completions. Second and seven. I think it's safe to say that'll go down two today. Yeah, we're still in the third quarter. Here's Hunter Renfro. First down yardage. Slammed out of bounds. And this is the run game. This this is it today, tonight for Clemson. He throws outside to Renfro. Gets licked there by Reggie Mitchell. But uh, there has been no consistent dedication to Wayne Gallman in between the tackles. It has all been throws down the field or bubbles on the outside to Artavis Scott and Hunter Renfro. But it's effective. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, listen, if, if Pitt's going to play this way defensively, absolutely. First and goal. They're listening to you, Greece. Here's Gallman. Touchdown. Clemson. And look out for the big celebrator. <laughs> That's Christian Wilkins. He says his teammates run away from him in celebrations. He celebrates too hard. Point puts it through. Again, it's an eight-point lead for Clemson. Final minute and a half of the third. New All State. Nets are getting a workout tonight, man. Like it's a Big 12 <laughs> Nets. 42-34, <laughs> and we're not even finished with quarter number three. Still waiting for a return from a man, Quadri Henderson. We heard so much about him. And he won't bring that out of the end zone. Take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Yeah, and it was uh, in the first half, Wayne Goldman touchdown. He reached out for the end zone, just broke the plane before the ball came out. Whitehead thought he had a touchdown, but good hands just long enough, Leaves. Good hands. What do you say about the legs? I mean, he's only rushed for 33 yards. But he's got three touchdowns in the game. Yeah, he's been inside the five yard line. He's just been the finisher of these drives, which have all been through the air. All right, Pittsburgh, how do you answer? With Peterman down the sideline. Jester Wea, it's knocked away. Ryan Carter on the coverage. Well, this is this is the difference. I want to show you the difference in the way these corners play the ball. Carter now looks back for the ball. You see that? He looks back so he gets the benefit of the doubt. You're not going to get a P.I. as often when you're looking back for the ball. Corners for Pittsburgh need to watch how Ryan Carter's playing. Second down and 10 upcoming. Fake the Connor. Pitched up. George Ashton and nothing there. Christian Wilkins makes the tackle. Well, we've talked about how to stop this play. Put your big fella out there and let him take care of James Conner. No, nope, he's not going to go to Conner. Look at his eyes right at the quarterback. Great read by Christian Wilkins, knowing what's coming. Remember, they said, too, they did a study of six games of Pitt. 50-50 run pass on third and 11 or longer. Exactly. The pass here. Peterman. Throwing on the run. And there's a flag down as he tried to connect with Dantez Ford. Looks like in the neighborhood of Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 69. Carlos the Fourth down. It's Adam Biznovity, the left tackle. But it doesn't matter. Incomplete pass and Clemson comes up with a stop. We haven't said that a whole lot. Only the second three and out for Pittsburgh. So Clemson's defense rises up. Here's Ryan Winslow on. For his second punt. The first snap he took off the grass and got it away. No problem here. 
And no fair catch there by Ray Ray McLeod trying to make something out of nothing. Tomorrow morning on ESPN, get your NFL Sunday started on the right foot. First 10 a.m. Eastern, it's NFL Insiders, the Sunday edition. Then at 11 a.m., Chris Berman, Wendy Nix, and the best in the business, the gang of Sunday NFL Countdown. And this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, two of the best receivers in the NFL, A.J. Green and the Bengals take on Odell Beckham Jr. and the Giants. We'll see a few back shoulder throws maybe and some yeah. long touchdown catches. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. That's Jordan Leggett, the tight end, getting back involved with this Clemson offense. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Not a big opportunity for pass rush there, but that's been one thing. We have not seen a lot of pass rush from Pitt. Juan Price came into the game, nine sacks, 16 tackles for loss, near the nation's top in both of those categories. Been very quiet. We've only mentioned his name for not mentioning his name, for doing not much out there except for an early penalty. Well, Deion Kane was there with the coverage of Dean Jackson. Yeah, in the last two games for Pittsburgh, the losses to Virginia Tech and Miami, their pass rush has been absent, and it's been a problem. And so they've tried to bring some creative pressures, Todd. They've tried to bring some corners in situations, but they haven't gotten the production that they got in the first half of the season from the D-line. See Price, 25 in a career and a half career sacks. Hugh Green has the record of 49. That's Wayne Gallman. And that'll do it. Zeroes on the scoreboard. A highly entertaining first three quarters. Did you see 42 34 coming? I saw 42 for one team. Yes. I saw 34 for the other. What does Pitt have left in the tank in quarter number four? The ball presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Hey, how, how much battery do you have left in your cell phone? You got a charger? Look, they got a Mophie, whatever that thing is. <laughs> Looks great when they light it all up. Though. Back in the day with a lighter at a concert. <laughs> Please, one more song. How about an encore? As we open up quarter number four, it's been downright thrilling. You're at number two, Clemson. Little jump pass. From Watson to Gallman, Matt Galambos able to make the play. Wow, Shakir Soto introduced himself, took the opportunity to get to Deshaun Watson on the ground. A last minute decision to try to get it to Gallman. Still got a lot of season left, number four. On the bunt, Andy Teasdall. Still waiting for that big return by Quadri Henderson. You keep saying it. Andy Teasdall punted it away. And it'll go as a fair catch for Henderson. Tonight, ABC Saturday Night Football. Jabril, an undefeated number three, Michigan, take on Iowa, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Wolverines, Hawkeyes, Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Also available streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. Iowa has won four of the last five meetings. Yeah, we, you know, we were doing that Michigan game last week and came across the stat. Michigan's played nine games. You know how many starting quarterbacks have started the game and finished the game against Michigan? No. Three. C.J. Beathard better put all the pads in the locker on. Worst starting field position for Pitt. Trailing by eight. Early fourth quarter. Hand off to Connor. He'll take the loss. Carlos Watkins in his face. This Clemson defensive line coming into this game, you could argue, was the strength of this team. They have been embarrassed through three quarters. 410 yards of offense by these Pitt Panthers. Maybe they had a conversation on the sideline after the end of that third quarter that they need to take this game in the fourth quarter into their hands. The last couple drives have done a nice job up front defensively. Watkins, great job getting off the ball there, getting in his gap, locating the ball, and then finishing. Just Connor's second loss on 17 carries. Give it to the first man through. It's Quadri Henderson on the jet sweep. He'll lose also. Pushed out by Van Smith. 
You've seen Brent Venables make a couple of adjustments. Look how many three, four defenders for Clemson on the outside on the perimeter run game. And they leave their defensive tackles inside for Connor and their secondary outside for Henderson. And Van Smith did a great job there. He was overmatched physically in that one on one, but he was able to keep the block off his body and keep outside discipline. So important against this offense that can attack you east and west. Since Venables arrived in 2012, Clemson has led the country in tackles for a loss. Two of them there. Here's third and 17. Peterman out of his end zone. Couldn't hook up with Henderson as he slipped out of the ball, slipped through his hands. And you start to wonder if Pitt, this game is slipping through their hands. That was a big drive there. This crowd for Clemson. They understand it. Fourth and 17. Ryan Winslow. I mean, he's got to watch the back of his heels here on that end line. Had issues with a snap earlier. This is not the neighborhood to have that in. No problem there. Winslow able to get it away. And good coverage on Ray Ray McLeod. As Aaron Matthews made the special team stop. Just throw the ball up and let those playmakers go up and make plays. And Sean Watts, you see it there, a new school record 481 yards and three touches. And they start with their best field position of the game. Hunter Renfro on the receiving end. Dane Jackson, the stop top. Well, we knew the storyline coming in was this pass defense for Pitt really struggling against four competent, really really good quarterbacks. Mason Rudolph from Oklahoma State, Mitch Trubisky, UNC, Virginia Tech's Jared Evans, and Brad Kaya last week from Miami averaged 439 passing yards and over three touchdowns. Here's Watson off the back foot. All sorts of time, the ball is knocked away. Trying to hook up a C.J. Fuller. Dane Jackson come over, came over with a big knock. Great job by Dane Jackson. Not getting a targeting foul here. That's a defenseless player. There's very few places you can hit Adam Choice right there. Can't hit him anywhere near the head or neck area. He keeps his face mask up and hits him on the shoulder and delodges the football. That's kind of training tape right there, how to hit a defenseless player. And this Pittsburgh defense being shredded by all these quarterbacks have just four interceptions on the season. They have picked off Watson twice today. Watson will go down that time. Finally, Juan Price shows up in a big spot. And it's going to go down as a sack for Juan Price, but give credit to this secondary. Make an adjustment. Pat Narduzzi, we've been on him. He makes it. He goes to a three deep defense, gives a little bit of help underneath to his corners. Nowhere to Sean Watson to go with the football. Maybe a half a On sack will give Juan Price there. That might be generous. Jeremiah Taleni was there also. Number 10, Quadri Henderson at eight. Quadri Henderson is back at his own 10 yard line. And I would tell Quadri Henderson, hey, if there's any chance you can catch the ball and return it, do so, please. And he'll call for the fair catch there. At the 10. We've seen him a couple times in the end zone. Do a yard well. or two. Today's Pittsburgh's last two possessions, both three and out. Nebraska, 22 to 15 in the Orange Bowl. Finished that season 12 and 0. Remember the fridge? Yeah. William Perry on that team. Here's Pittsburgh in a one-score game. 11:50 to go. Starting with their worst field position of the day. Got to think Coach Narduzzi would have taken being trailing by one score here in Death Valley with 11.45 left coming into this game. And, and here they are. It's James Conner pounding the rock. All you can ask for is an opportunity on the road in the fourth quarter down one score. I mean, this, this offense has been highly effective in this game, although the last two times out haven't been able to get anything going. Minus one and minus seven yards in the previous three and outs. That's a short game, James Conner again. It seemed like they wanted to start picking up the tempo a little bit. Down by the student, student section, it's hard to hear down here, so they've got to do a great job with the, the silent counts. Third and five. Gotta have it. The 
this situation. Third downs are what's going to win this game in the fourth quarter. The scoreboard says the noise meter just went over 100 decibels. Peterman thrown on the run. Too strong for Darren Hall. And there's a flag comes late. Yeah, I think they're going to throw an illegal man downfield. The offensive line was down the field, and the ball was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. It's going to go against Pittsburgh. See Davos and ineligible. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. This Clemson defense, we talked about them giving up all those yards and all these points through three quarters, but give them credit, the last three drives when they needed it the most, they've come up with three straight three and outs. Both teams' offenses have stalled lately. In fact, the last five possessions in the game, all three and outs. Three by Pittsburgh, two by Clemson. Ryan Winslow will put it in the air. Ray McLeod will let it bounce. Takes a pit bounce. And it'll be down at the 42-yard line. Take a look at this week's college football rankings. Brought to you by Capital One. There's one, two, three, and four. I remember asking you last week. Now, granted, we were in Ann Arbor, and granted, you spent some time there as a college student yourself, and you thought Michigan was deserved to be ranked number two ahead of Clemson. Uh, yeah, I've had Michigan up there number two for a couple yes. of weeks. Uh, that's just my opinion. And while Michigan them. plays tonight yep. at Iowa, you've seen Clemson now. I'm just yep. curious. The one thing I guess your feelings haven't changed then. <laughs> Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, the one thing I think uh, is Washington at four. I think they have the toughest road to hoe. They've still got USC, obviously, tonight, Washington State, Apple Cup, and then that Pac-12 championship. I would not rule out the Louisville Cardinals. So Auburn trailing on that scoreboard. Jordan Leggett on the receiving end there. Part of me, and I, again, no, no, no horse in the race. A Washington loss. Would create college football chaos. Well, that, which is which is exciting, which yes. is fun, which is great for everyone except the fine people of Washington State. Well, I think what would what would create even more chaos would be Michigan losing to Ohio State. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. That's Hunter Renfro, and that's a first down. Should point out this is Senior Day here at Clemson, which is somewhat deceiving because Clemson still has another home game. But that's their rivalry game against South Carolina. A few years ago, after losing to the Gamecocks five years in a row, they said, hey, let's scrap the senior day festivities. There's too much on the line. Too emotional. Too many emotions, too much distractions. Let's make it another game. Mike Williams trying to be on the receiving end there. And Reggie Mitchell had the coverage. A uh, little double move by Mike Williams. The out and up. They beat Dane Jackson. And that's a drop. 15. That ball was into Reggie his Mitchell. chest before Reggie Mitchell got there. And Mike Williams has made so many great plays in this game and this season. The one thing, and I asked Todd McShay about this, the one thing with number seven are the drops. Yeah. He has them. He hasn't had a ton of them. He, he, he'll get back to him in a second was an issue early in the season. He saw Deshaun slip there as he threw the football to Artavis Scott. Goes as an incomplete pass. Oh, there, right there is a perfect case in that last drop by Mike Williams of why you do not let the ball into your pads. You hear coaches say it. Young people out there are watching who want to be a receiver. You've got to go attack the ball with your hands. It's so important. I, I actually view him as having good ball skills, catching the ball, his ability to catch those 50-50 balls we've seen all day long, an occasional focus drop I can live with. Yeah, we talked with Jeff Scott about that last night. He said the same thing, that he actually felt like he had great hands. Watson throwing and completing to Scott for the first down. I haven't seen a whole lot of offenses that have had more ease of completing passes than this Clemson offense tonight. I mean, this this is starting to make me sick, honestly, the way that they're playing defensively, the Pitt Panthers. And yet, 
Clemson's only up by eight for everything. Here's Cassidy Hubbard with an update. Pass complete to Artavis Scott. Gain of a yard on the play. Good stuff, Cassidy. Thank you. Mount Union will look to start another winning streak next time out. Good on John Carroll. Good for them. Shakir Soto slow to get up for Pitt. He was already questionable for this game coming in. He and Tyreek Jarrett were both injured on the same play last week in that loss to Miami. Amir Watts went down earlier in the game. That's all from the same position. So the Pittsburgh depth being tested today. And again, with everything we're saying, I mean, Pitt's still in this football game. They're Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. But, you know, Pat Narduzzi's got to find a way to stop this offense for Clemson. Number 52, Shakir Soto. Let's just say at this point, everything Deshaun Watson does is a new school record. <laughs> Let's make that blanket statement. Second Completions, passing yards. He's breaking and setting everything. Here this afternoon into the early evening in Clemson, South Carolina. And there's another one. And another catch from Mike Williams. To Mike Williams. I think it might be safe to say that all four of those Brought quarterbacks have played against Richie Pitt this Mitchell. year. You know, because we were wondering, hey, if Watson's not 100%, would you take this game off? No you way. You were like, <laughs> you got a chance to put up some career numbers, right? <laughs> what kid no doesn't want some way. personal stats? Again, it's Mike Williams. Hey, Deshaun Watson's also trying to get somehow back into the Heisman race. Yep. Right? He sort of slowly dropped out, dropping a couple of spots. Wait a minute. Does uh, Lamar Jackson still play Pittsburgh? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> Watson, 525. Texas, this is, this is like Texas Tech defense right here. And then Watson with plenty of time. And our Tavis Scott couldn't scoop it off the turf. We had so we're at 42-34. We have not had a field goal in the football. Red zone. <laughs> and Mike Williams, a career high receiving yards, 180 for the game today. Second down and 10. Look at the soft. Look at the soft areas out here. I mean, it's like every single snap. You, you throw the ball in the flat, you're going to get eight, 10 yards. Not that time. Wayne Gallman, complete to Wayne Gallman, decked instantly by Avante Maddox, who's had a nice game. It'll be third and 11. Third down 11 here. In this situation, Pitts played soft on the outside. Pat Narduzzi's kind of played a conservative. We'll see. That's 11 yards. That's a first down. You just pop it out there. 11th play of this drive. Field goal will be big here as well, making a two-score game. If they can't convert, which they can. Hunter Renfro, first down yardage. They essentially put a linebacker on number 30, Mike Caprera. And yes, there was help over the top from the safety, but he was, he was too far back dropping. It was an easy decision for Watson there. Got 13 in the first down. Here's first and goal. Sean Watson, always cool and calm. Goldman. Has three rushing touchdowns, looking for four. It's really the only area of the field where Gallman's got any carries. He's inside the 10-yard line. Wayne Gallman, the ball carrier. That's been an issue with him, honestly, this season is, you know, he wants more touches. There are so yards. many players. Scott, Deion Kane, Renfro, Leggett. Ray I mean, McLeod. There's, a, there's, there's not enough balls for Dabble Sweeney to, to, to feed all these guys. Gallman. Really has been the one that suffered. Second down and goal. Throwback intercepted. Intercepted at the goal line for Pittsburgh. Salim Brightwell trying to go the distance and he's dragged down from behind by Mike Williams, saving a touchdown in a spot where really all they needed was a field goal. 
Watson throws his third interception of the game. Sean Watson's trying to do a little bit too much. They're trying to sneak Jordan Leggett right here out of the backside of the end zone, but watch the defender. He doesn't bite. This ball should be run by Deshaun Watson. He's forcing that football nowhere to go. Check out the effort by Mike Williams on the other side, though. This is still a one-score game, as you said. Plays in this game, 12 catches, over 180 yards. Look at the effort. Never give up on the play. Give your defense a place to stand. And that just jumps out to me. Where he came from, tracking him down, and how important it is in the game. Not only as a coach and a teammate do you have a ton of respect for this guy, the NFL scouts, I'm telling you, that's going to be the first thing they point to is the effort that he showed on that play and, and just how good of a team player he is week in and week out. No question. Even with it, it was a 70-yard return. Still does not overshadow well, of course. That, that mistake. Three interceptions now for Deshaun Watson. Second in the red zone. 13 on the season and a golden opportunity for this offensive pit. Here's Peterman. Throwing on the run. Couldn't hook up with Aaron Matthews, the true freshman out of Clareton, PA. Where has James Conner gone? Right? This defensive line for Clemson has stood up in the fourth quarter. You cannot just hand it to him and expect him to run between the tackles right now. You got, you got some soft edges when you use Connor on the perimeter. Wouldn't be surprised if they try it again. Second down and ten. Peterman too high. Scott Orndorff, all six five of them went up along with Van Smith and Orndorff couldn't bring it down. Yeah, you mentioned 6'6". Six, six. He's just going to run a little out and up. It's not the fleetest of foot, but just treat him like a basketball player. Give him a chance to go up and make a play. Got to have that. Field goal doesn't help Pitt the way it would have helped Clemson down at the other end. Five and a half to go. Fourth quarter. Third and ten. Peterman lost one down the sideline. The timing off of Chester Weah, but there is a flag. They had Kayvon Wallace, the safety, in coverage. Holding. Defense, number 12. 10-yard penalty. First down. Let's take a look. I didn't see it. So an all-out blitz. The safety, Kayvon Wallace, has man-to-man. -man. That's... <laughs> oh, I don't see it, Steve. I don't know what to tell you. No. Nope. There's no foul there. Not there. It's That's really you pick up and put it in your pocket. Gives him a fresh set of downs. Here's Connor. Turns the corner. Inside the 10, 5, touchdown! James Conner and Pittsburgh is a two-point conversion away from tying the game. We talked about that stiff arm. It is deadly. You come up to tackle James Conner on the perimeter, you have got to go low because if he gets you with that left hand, it's over. See, so changed the ball right there. Daniel, who had him earlier in the game and was able to get him down, James Conner willed his way in the end zone. Now you got to go for two. That interception, the key play of the 70 yard return, setting this up. Pittsburgh looking for the tie. Peterman under pressure. Hit as he threw incomplete. Clean Farrell had the pressure. Mistake by Deshaun Watson. Started to feel it. They were throwing the ball all over the field. He took a chance, and Pitt made him pay. Still down two, though.
Clemson should be winning by two touchdowns. There were two penalties. The, the personal foul on Bulware, which Pitt scored a touchdown. That was a phantom call. And that last holding call was a phantom call as well. That's 14 points in this game that should have gone to Clemson. Still trailing by two. Pittsburgh is with 5.17 left. Here's Artavis Scott. Stumbling forward out to the 23. Here's Cassidy Hubbard with an update. Was that seven points for Auburn? That's all they scored in that game? Pretty amazing. That looked like the Auburn team that played Clemson earlier in the season, not the one we've seen the last three, four, five weeks. Always fun to watch Jabril Peppers, who also has slipped in the Heismanology, if you will. Artavis Scott on the receiving end there. Pitt has been charged with no penalties so far this half. So we'll watch for that on this offensive series by Clemson. Better than 81,000 on hand here in Death Valley. Does this count as a night game now? Because I've always had on my bucket list to a night game at this Death Valley. Does this count? Absolutely. Now the daylight saving. All right. Hunter Renfro just across the 40. Has first down yardage. Whatever Pat Narduzzi has left in the play sheet, whatever energy this defense for Pitt has left, they have to find some way to stop this team on this drive. Otherwise, this game could be over. Throwing, completing Deion Kane, a little spin move. For another first down. You know, despite their undefeated record, this is the third time Clemson has given up over 30 points. Gave up 36 to Louisville, 34 to Florida State, and of course, 40 here to Pitt. Look, Deion Kane may have had his knee down on that last throw and catch. This offense is going so fast, there's hardly enough time to replay it. They may have gotten it in. Rolling on the field is a completed catch. Previous play is under review. So we'll take a look at that. This is a mind boggling statistic. So Clemson has 32 first downs in the game, none via the run. <laughs> Not one of the 32 first downs have come on a running play. 30 on the pass, two on a penalty. That's pretty clear that knee down. It's three to one past the run right now. And Don't have to be touched in college. It's a big call. It's an extra 12 yards there, it looked like. And another first down. Catches the ball there. 44. Yeah, I think it. Play official tonight is Joe Ryder. Veteran of the 82nd Airborne. Yep. We salute him. Salute him today. He hadn't had, he hadn't had any issues tonight. No. It's all been on the field. I got no problem with good old Joe right there. Yep. From Evansville, Indiana, hometown of my old man. Actually went to the same high school as my uncle. Memorial High School in Evansville. Talking with him before the game, he says it's it's harder now to do this job, replay official, than it ever has been. And especially with the targeting. He was talking with him about the targeting right. at, at length. And now, you know, the ACC they have an opportunity to review back in Greensboro. So it makes it even a little bit more difficult. At the review, the receiver's knee was down when the ball was possessed. It will be second and seven from the 44-yard line. Second down. And yeah, that's the easiest one they've had all day. Yeah. But it just sometimes it takes a little bit longer because they'll confer with Greensboro sure. and, and we, 
we've seen that in the SEC has done it even even more so. Big Ten is dabbling with it, you know, with these uh, remote sites where officials can review these calls. If I had to, if I was a betting man, I figured that we're going to go in that direction sure. for all conferences. Sort of a mission control, centrally located office. That's what the pro sports are. Second down and seven. Watson off the play fake. A little behind Mike Williams, but he's still able to grab it. They're going to spot him short. That'll bring up third. Third down. And two. Third and two. Here it is. Here's your opportunity to get off the field. Come Narduzzi. Why not sell out? Sell out. Try to make a play. Let your guys play with confidence. Juan Price hadn't made a whole lot of plays in this game, but. Don't just give it to him on the outside. I think Narduzzi's going to call a timeout. Timeout. Pittsburgh. Their first timeout of the half. Full Too big out. a play. Too big a play. Yep. Good spot for a timeout. Well, think about it. How they're going to play this third and two when we come back. Game. Number two team in the land, Clemson, on their home field. Against Pitt. Clemson has 44 straight victories over unranked opponents. Out of the Pitt timeout, third and two. And maybe the ball game on this play. Watson the throw. And it's caught. Who else? Mike Williams. First Thanks down. Dabo Sweeney wanted a penalty on top of it. It's just, it's just one guy's bigger than the other. It's get in a basketball position and box him out and put it right on his chest. 6'3, 225, and Maddox came through over the top, and Dabo wanted a penalty on top of it. But you got the first down, coach. Be happy with it. And on first and ten, they will hand off to Wayne Gallm, and he'll lose a yard. On that last pass play, that's significant for Deshaun Watson. He's not just breaking Clemson records today. He just broke Stephen Morris's ACC passing record. Morris from Miami threw for 566 yards back in 2012 against NC State. And Deshaun Watson now, 570, a new ACC record. You can tell the grandkids you saw it live. Coming out of two minutes of play here in the fourth. Yeah, and Deshaun needs to use all this play clock. Get it under five seconds before you snap this ball. And Narduzzi will take a timeout after this snap. Here they come. Watching the throw. Williams to catch. Complete to Mike Williams. Narduzzi is not taking a timeout. He's got two of them. You can stop the clock. You, ha you have to call a timeout here. You, you have to. And you can stop the clock on offense when you have the ball. You can't do it on defense without timeouts. I don't. I don't understand. Now it's too late. We've already wasted all that time. Williams has 15 catches for 202 yards. This game ticking away from Pitt. You have to anticipate that your defense is going to get the stop here. You just lost 45 seconds. And I think Clemson's going to let it run down and call a timeout, which is smart. Timeout. Clemson, their first time out of the half. Following the Cal Washington State game tonight on ESPN, stay tuned for Sports Center at night. John Anderson, Lisa Kearney. They have all the news, highlights, and analysis from college football, the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, and everything else from a busy day and night in sports. Sports Center at night tonight after college football on ESPN. Also available streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch. ESPN on this Veterans Day weekend. Want to say very thank you very much, not just for what they do for us, but what they've done for our country. These are all the veterans on our crew. Artie Pankoff, Tom Marriott, Jim Crow, Joel Croning, and BZ. BZizzle. Brian Zulinski helping us out. Look at Joel's Army t-shirt. I like that. Mm -hmm. Although they're not faring very well, Joel, uh, against the Fighting Irish, I heard. <laughs> this is it. Clemson can seal it right here. One yard. You could hear Dabo in the huddle. One yard wins it. 
There's the pitch. Didn't get it. Didn't get there. No, he didn't get it. Hey, and Pittsburgh will take a timeout. So now, see how this plays well, out now. It's a two-point game still. What is what does Dabo Sweeney decide to do here? You have your options: attempt a field goal, go for it, punt. From, uh, I from, think I would punt. You would punt. I, I think, think I would punt. The way your defense is giving up yep. big plays, they only need a field goal to win. Well, I would try to pin them. I don't disagree with that, Todd. It's a 52 or 53 yard field goal. Well, that's, from there. that's the last option. That's the last thing I would do. No. Is attempt a field goal, potential block, and run it back. No, that's that's out. Question is, do you want to try to make make him go the long field or or seal it right here on offense? It looks like Dabo Sweeney is going to go for it. Yeah, if you do go, make sure Watson, the ball's in Watson's hand. Whether it's a throw, run pass option, or maybe the first designed run for him of the game. Uh, I don't think I'd do that. If your shoulder's hurt, you know, ball security's an issue. You know, he hasn't been in there in the mesh at all in this game. I wouldn't rule out the if he lines up in a shotgun, it might be a little pooch punt. I was gonna say, can, well. he, can he kick? Clemson will take a timeout. 62 seconds left for number two Clemson. Clemson has found themselves in a lot of these games. They won five of the first eight by seven points or less. End zone, knocked down and away. Clemson hangs on. Marcus Edmond saves the game for Clemson. Intercepted by Marcus Edmond, and that will end the ball game. Tigers are going to escape Tallahassee with a W. And while we have this second, one more tip of the cap to a member of our crew, Marty Aronoff, also has served his country proudly, and we thank him. Legendary statistician with us every week in the booth. So they've got their goal line personnel out there, Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins. This is where they like to run the ball with Gallman. Pitch to Gallman. Stumbles. Not going to get there. Not going to get there. Matt Galambos came up to make the big stop, the middle linebacker. And there's 58 seconds left, and Pittsburgh has that one timeout left. And all they need is a field goal. Yep, Galambos, Delaney. They come up in a bare defense. They cover down with five defensive linemen. Give credit, these guys have been on the field quite a bit in this game, and they needed that play, and they got it. Now, they do have the timeout, Steve, but that timeout was worth 40 seconds, so they could have had no timeouts for 40 more seconds. This is how Pat Narduzzi has chosen to go. Again, Chris Blewett, their field goal kicker, has four career field goals of 50 or more yards. Here's Peterman, able to escape some trouble. He'll take off middle of the field. He's just shy of the first down marker. And Narduzzi's going to burn that timeout right away. He took a timeout. He didn't feel like Peterman got to the first down sticks, so he ran up to the official and called timeout. Chris Blewett, career long of 56 yards. That's a school record. Hit it at Georgia Tech in 2015. He's missed an extra point tonight and had a 53 yarder prior to the half block. Boy, if you're Dabo Sweeney on the sideline, what's going through his head? Going back to that NC State finish where Kyle Bambard missed the 33 yarder and he fell to his knees, his hands and knees, and was thankful just to get to overtime. All those streaks on the line for Clemson. We figure they got to get to the 38 of Clemson. We'll give him a try from 56. You see the field goal target line. Across the middle, it's Orndorff. They're in field goal range, out to the 33. Plenty of time here to run another play with Connor. Peterman throwing again, again it's Orndorff. 
Dropped at exactly the 30 yard line. You got to go. It's your Peterman here. You got to remember no timeouts. You'd love to get inside the 20 and make this a more feasible field goal attempt. Sideline. Dangerous pass. Looking for a Wea. Ryan Carter came over for the smack. That's a dangerous throw. Well, it was a great. It was a great play by Carter. That ball floated just a little bit on Peterman. I like the uh, the throw out there, but doesn't hurt him. Right? It's an incomplete pass. Stops the clock. Third, Third and six. It's a 48-yard field goal from here. You got you to keep an eye on the play clock here. Peterman's run over the sideline. He's back in the huddle. Only 10 seconds. He cannot have a penalty here. Third down and six. Peterman to his left and thrown across his body. Incomplete. Could not hook up with Dantes Ford. Boy, and that's crunch time. Crunch time, all out blitz from Brent Venables. Putting the pressure on the quarterback. Brings up an incompletion and it's going to force a longer field goal attempt. That last field, the only field goal he attempts, remember he hit it into the back of his line. He's got to get it up in the air. 48 yard field goal attempt. Chris Blewett, the senior. Dabo got the timeout that time. You know, prior to halftime, Dabo wanted a timeout, didn't get the timeout call. And blew it had it blocked. Blew it actually banged it off Alex Bookser, his own offensive lineman. This was the scene prior to the half. You just in this situation, you just gotta trust it. And and will this kiss pay off? For Pat Narduzzi. He said you love that coaching. I did love it. He got a smile out of his kicker saying, probably saying, listen, I'm going to need you later. If we're going to do this, I'm going to need you to get your head in the game, trust your leg and your swing, and let it rip. Pat Quire in the long snapper. Ryan Winslow to hold it for Chris Blewett to try to knock off number two at Clemson. Blew it, got it. Wow. With six seconds left, and it is stunned disbelief inside Death Valley. You want to talk about the nerves of a kicker. Not only did he kick that field goal attempt into the back of somebody earlier, he missed an extra point in this game. And Pat Narduzzi puts his arm around him, gives him a kiss, and says, listen, I need you later. And he was there for him. I talked to Narduzzi before the game and said, Coach, how comfortable are you? There's no wind today. He said, you know what? We've got a great kicker. I love my guy. Because he nailed one from 56 last year. And if it had, we had to do it, put in a situation, I'd let him go a couple of yards even further than that. He had a lot of confidence in that guy. And you can see it on the last one. Exactly why. When NC State was here, they had the chance to beat Clemson. That was at the other end of the stadium. That was in 33. Clemson needed overtime to win that game. Well, Clemson has had so many close games this year. They dodged the bullet against NC State, and Dabo Sweeney knew it. They probably shouldn't have been in this situation in this game. There's a couple of penalties that we'll probably hear about from Dabo and his post-game presser. It's a ground ball of a kick to the up man. And they'll flip it around and try to get to the hands of Artavis Scott when he gets in his hands. He's drilled, and that's your football game. And the Pitt Panthers pour out of the field. They have done the unthinkable. They have rocked Clemson's world and shaken up all of college football. Talk about chaos. We didn't think it was going to be this game. We thought maybe Washington, maybe Michigan tonight, not Clemson against Pittsburgh, a Pittsburgh team that's lost two straight coming in. 
and not here. First home loss against an unranked opponent. Simply amazing. 44 straight games it had been. And down to Todd McShay, wow. Coach, unbelievable win. You hang in there, give up a lot of points, but your defense comes up with three big turnovers. Uh, what are you feeling right now? Unbelievable. You know what? Our kids deserve this. We've had a tough year, lost a lot of uh, tight games by this much, and our guys finished tonight. They, 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 you know, they get all the respect in the world. You know, the Little Panthers got it done. We got little number five, we got little number 10, but we got a bunch of guys that make plays. Coming into this game, we, we talked about all the different matchups and all the other, but, and we also talked about your kicker. I asked you before, you said, I got a great kicker. He can go from 56, maybe beyond. Tough day, tough start to the day, but how about him hanging in there making that big kick? You know what? He did a heck of a job. You know, after he had a couple of flubs, I went over and gave him a kiss early in the game, and, and I, you know, I said, hey, wipe, that, wipe it off when he hit the guys in the back, and we just kind of stayed positive with him. You know, Chris Boot's been a money guy on, on field goals in the past, and he made a major game winner. How about a couple of your, your seniors, your veterans, Connor at the running back position, quarterback, just, just how they played and how proud you are. You know, Matt Cannon on offense did a heck of a job, and they scored enough points to win the game, 43 points. You know, we get the ball back. You talk about a four, how about a fourth down stop down there? How about a third and one and a fourth and one stop by the defense? I mean, it's a team win, and I'm so proud of our guys. How important is this win for everything you're building here at Pitt? It's everything. We're bowl eligible. We knocked off the number two team in the country, and uh, our guys had a lot of guts tonight. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Pittsburgh beat number two West Virginia back in 2007. And here they knock off number two, Clemson. Gonna be a, give me a feel for reaction around the country after this one. Shock. It's going to be shock. We knew that uh, there was going to be some shakeup in this conference.